Hey, you know what? I'm, I'm turning the music off for now. Um, yeah. Welcome to Casually FC. Welcome to your match review for Chelsea nil, Liverpool one. Um, Carabao Cup final, and a uh, very, very crappy loss, uh, to say the least. Once again, uh, a story of unfinished chances, a story of maybe Potch decided to be a coward at the end, a story of this is why in moments like this you could use an experienced player or experienced players, and another moment where we look up at the ownership and see the damage done. Six defeats in a row at Wembley. A a um, a record set by Chelsea now. And not a good kind of record. Um, and yeah, I think any Chelsea fan that is looking at this match and denying any type of responsibility or accountability from anyone in this match um, is absolutely deluded, I would say. I think from top to bottom, from the players to the manager to the board and to the ownership, there's a lot to blame here. And this club is an absolute fucking mess. And you know what? Just, I guess, a quick review of the match, which there's not really much to talk about. First half, it was back and forth. Both teams had multiple opportunities to score. We had an offside goal with Sterling um, scoring it, but Jackson just being offside. I believe also in that first half, we had the Van Dyke header, which was ruled offside as well. From uh, because of Endo being a part of the play, um, and in the second half once again back and forth we had chances we couldn't be clinical. Gallagher had the clearest of chances, and substitutions were made. Now in hindsight, I think there were mistakes there, and we lose it in the second half of the extra time. We tried to play for penalties and we failed, even though we were at their door knocking, knocking constantly. We decided to back off because we wanted to go to penalties for whatever reason. You want to go to penalties with this inexperienced team, young team that has so much pressure on them. Um, but yeah, absolutely. <sighs> There was a good performance there to talk about. But now, when you look at the context of things, a Liverpool team that wasn't at its best, it was a youth Liverpool team for the most part, outside of Gakpo, Robertson, Van Dyke, Endo. There's a lot of young players in that team. And we had the better squad in terms of fitness, in terms of availability, in terms of starters. Yeah, we failed to and get bench. a result. And bench. And yet we failed to get a result. Pochettino loses yet another final. No one's going to care about the game. Everyone's going to look. Everyone's going to look at the final result and who won the trophy. And statistically, from the outside looking in, this match looks a lot worse than it actually was. And I think it's fair. I think the criticism is fair. And there's a lot of criticism to be had. And I guess I wanna I'm gonna stop monologuing, but yeah, this one this one really fucking hurt. This one sucks. And I um you know, I can't even 100% put the blame on Poch, but there were mistakes that were made towards the end game and even in the beginning of the starting lineup. And now in hindsight, we're looking at decisions that were made by Poch and thinking, well, maybe you shouldn't have started Sterling. 
maybe you shouldn't have taken off Jackson. And now there's questions about the players as well. Why is someone like Enzo getting outplayed in the midfield when you have a he, he, just Endo? Gravin Birch got taken out of the game because of an injury. You're left with just Endo and Harvey Elliott and whoever the other midfielder was. I think McAllister was there too. Yeah, sure. Yes, yes. But there, there's plenty of quality that you should be able to dominate that midfield regardless. And there's questions to be had about Enzo. There's questions to be had about the board now. If we had had an experienced player, experienced attacker up top, maybe maybe we can be more clinical. If we had maybe another experienced defender, maybe what happened to Mudrik getting beaten for a header by Van Dyke doesn't happen. We look at the coaching staff, maybe the decisions to not have the Sassy Mark Van Dyke or Colwell Mark Van Dyke and uh, Colwell Kanate or whatever. What's so you having your center backs mark their center backs? Maybe we look at that decision as well to not have the experienced players. We look at that for the board, but at the end of the day, the ones that really, really, really steered the ship in this direction were the owners. And now I'm looking at the owners thinking, how much more of this? Are we going to let ensue until we decide to start making these changes? And even then, are we going to make the right decisions? So I'm going to stop monologuing. There's plenty to talk about. We'll start to break it down little by little. But I guess, Chris, since you weren't on the Discord, I would like to hear uh, your thoughts overall on the match. I I I thought you just noticed. Is there actually no music on purpose? Oh wow! Yeah, I took it off for a second because <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't want to be bothered right now. Yeah. Okay. That make okay. I just thought. Yeah, we're putting it back on. We're putting it back on. The stream or something like. Yeah. I honestly, mean, can honestly, you blame me? No, no, I can't blame you. I can't blame you. Like this, this whole season's a depressing season. Like last season, like yep. this whole. It, it makes me sad to say this. This cold club, like. From squad to like players to manager to owners and the board members again, it all it's all shit. It's all shit. Like it's failed for the last two seasons now. Like we have that this today was probably the only hope where we can probably maybe get European any type of European football and a trophy as well. And we've blown it. Like how how you lose to a how does Poch and this team like because Poch is just as bad as the with the team as well today of course how you make yourself lose to like a team like endo where we laughed at because we stole two of Liverpool's players you know kaiseido and and uh, not Enzo, kaiseido and um lavia they didn't get any of their main guys and they had endo doing a job against chelsea where we have like you know kaiseido enzo sterling palmer and all that and they, they have greven birch and endo in their midfield like that's just not good enough to actually play against most teams in the final and we was just that embarrassing to play it's just a spineless team where we couldn't even get one goal together. Like, we, we was missing our chances. First half, we were shocking as well. We weren't really doing shit in the first half as well. Like, second half was obviously a bit better. But, yeah, like, it, it it's it's horrible to watch. Because, like, now, what what have we got to look forward to now as a Chelsea fan? What have we got to look forward to now? Like, what, we're literally 10th. And we've got no, uh, no trophies again this season, of course. Like, we're not going to win the FA Cup, let's be real. We're not going to make it probably past Leeds at this point. I don't know when we'll get Leeds, but this whole team is deflated now. I can tell, like, as soon as we can see that goal um, in extra time, like, this whole team was deflated. Like, deflated. like it, Poch was like a ghost when uh, we conceded. He, he, he just looked like he's about to break down because, like, he's failed as a manager. Like, in, in for Chelsea, he's failed. Like, today, like, this is the only chance maybe you can say he might get more support, you know, like, you know, fan base might back him a bit more, you know, he's got a trophy to back himself, but he's done, he's he's really made a mess up of this season himself as well. You could say this team isn't obviously perfect, because I actually agree, this team isn't perfect, like, you know, you got Mudrik, who isn't like that great yet, you got Sterling, who's honestly, I know we're going to talk about Sterling, but Sterling was a massive letdown today, and I'm I'm a big fan of Sterling, like, obviously in the past. He, he just seemed like a, he just seemed like he didn't care. He didn't he didn't care today like um help it like he didn't do anything to help this team actually do anything. He just seemed like you know what it's just a Carabao Cup final. Like I've I've done everything as a player. I don't give a shit about this team or anything like that. It didn't see, it didn't seem like 
he really cared today and i don't know just something broken with this uh team right now like i i it's <laughs> it's it's quite um it's quite bad seeing it all like unfold this season because i really thought last season was just a blip and a one-off but now it's happened again and i don't know when the end is gonna happen like when we actually go get good again because it's just embarrassing just to watch us become we're, we're, we're just worse than we're worse than like wolves and Bryant. we're becoming like a team like that right now and it's 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 horrible like i i have no no hope with this team now like it's just it's just dead like it's there's nothing good of this team now like and i, I obviously there's good players in this team but like I don't know where it's like, you know, is it all on the manager? Is it like partner players? Is it like the ownership, what we've built? Like, I, I'm, I'm kind of like getting out of questions of this team because we don't, we don't seem to have it. We don't seem to be like, have anything about this club. It's just, I don't, I don't know what to really say about this um, club anymore. Like it's, it's depressing to look at like, today was just yeah it's just it, it's it's just chelsea man like we just we're but we became bottle jobs like the club's a bottle job club now like it's it's honestly sad to see because we used to used to winning obviously now we don't win anything we're just mid table so i don't i don't know what really else to say about it right now like just as a club i can talk about like obviously the players and who's let us down like there wasn't many good players today the only like players if you've talked about today like only players i thought was good today was like, literally like petrovic Colwell was okay. I thought Dasasi was, you know, decent as well. Gusto, you know, he was decent. He was decent in the first, the second half, sorry. And uh, Kaiseido was trying, obviously. I thought he was all right. Gallagher was, you know, like, he was. He, he let us down, obviously. He had a really good chance to score, and he blew it. Uh, Palmer didn't really do a whole lot. Sterling was a ghost. He, he was not even trying, like I said. Like, he, he, he didn't even try to say I don't think. And Jackson had a deal with Van Dyke and uh, Canate where... You know, probably wasn't fair on him either. So yeah, like it's, I don't, know. <laughs> I don't know what else to say about this club. Really, it's it's horrible. I mean, you know, you touched on the whole FA Cup thing. Um, <clears throat> I'll, I'll say this: I, I, I don't even know how I'm saying this. I have a feeling this team can make it to the FA Cup final, but I don't have I don't have this feeling or chest that we're even gonna win it. But it's, you know what, Andrew, I'll pass this question on to you. Do you think that um, this defeat, and there's a hair in my mouth, so pardon me. Do you think that this defeat is is going to have a negative, a negative effect on the players where now we're going to see a downturn in performances and uh, the just the games are going to get worse and worse? Or do you think that possibly... It's a wake-up call to be better in the next final that they arrive to. So, going on that question, I honestly, I honestly don't know. I don't know. Um, I will say this: this manager, with his comments after the game, mm. these yeah, well, players never stood a chance this season with this manager. They never stood a chance. For him to come out and say the team felt we were we were we were we needed to go to penalties. Why? Why would the team say that? We finished the second half strong. Why would the team why would the team say that? Why would the team why would any team say that? We finished the team we finished half strong. Let's step on the neck and wipe them out in extra time. No. Pochettino has proven what a absolute born loser he is. He's a loser. And I don't blame... Listen, I can have a go at the players for missing, no problem. But with his comments today, I guarantee you he's been doing stuff like this all season. Now it will make sense. Saw it away to, away to City. The last 20 minutes, cowardice. He is... They're not the biggest... Enzo and Cassette are not the biggest issue. You've just got a hard on for them because you love Gallagher or something like that. Um... He is the biggest issue at this club. Not the players. He is the biggest issue at this club. He instills the mentality into the players. For him to actually think with half an hour left against Liverpool when they're on the ropes that we should go for penalties just shows his mentality. He's a loser. He's a loser and a coward. A loser and a coward. A loser and a coward. 
Yeah. And now my mind's already made up about uh, Poch. Uh, my focus is now on the owners because I'm. My focus is not on the directors because I want them to go as well. My phone. Mm -hmm. My focus is now on the owners solely. Um, my mind's made up about Poch. Nothing will change my mind about Poch, especially now. It's now rock cemented. It cannot be. Nothing. Mm. No. No experiment can. It can't be fought out of ice. It can't be this and that. His quotes today are the worst quotes I've ever seen from any manager, rival or Chelsea manager. What actually made him think he can come out and say stuff like this and we'd go, oh, yeah. Oh, I can understand. Why? What makes him think he can come out and say these sort of things? <clears throat> now, you can blame the players. Sure, we should have finished our chances. No problem. But that's been a systematic issue at Chelsea for seven years of not finishing chances. So it's just a general thing. We can see that we can see that set of pieces again. Why does he have Chua constantly marking the best header of the opposition? Why does that always happen? Why? Why? Why, why does that always happen? Why? His um, substitutions, Mudrick made little impact at all. Mm -hmm. um, I think Gallagher was limping, so that's why he came off. Um, yeah, and you know. And this narrative now that oh yeah your all your players are overrated you didn't you can't say they're overrated if you don't rate them now do you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. and these players you, you said they're all overrated these players would be doing far better in other teams let's see and under different managers if Klopp was our manager if Klopp was our manager for the past six months we'd have wiped liverpool off the face of the earth today with that with that team would have wiped them off face of the yeah. earth and be higher up in the league and I'm just, I just, all right, do you know, just hold a time out. I'm just sick of you, man. It's just a constant, uh, <laughs> constant, constant, constant douchebag. No um, uh, so I just, he's got to go. And people go, well, you know, we might, might, and we might, oh, let's, let's have a run in the FA Cup. I honestly couldn't care less at this moment in time. I, I don't even if to win even if to win the FA Cup. I don't want him to stay. Why would you want him to stay? He's a coward. He's a coward, and he's made he's made every, he's made these players worse. You know, as a collect for him, even his comments when he said, "Oh, the uh, players felt that um, felt that." What, what do you mean? You think if the players said that to Jurgen Klopp, he would go, "Yeah, yeah, we'll go, we'll go for penalties." No, you're supposed to be the leader of this team. You're supposed to say no. We're going to go on and we're going to smash them in extra time. And that's what I keep saying. These players are actually—he hasn't lost the dressing room. These players are playing for him. They're following his instructions to the T. You can see it. Why was there such a change from the end of the second half to the whole period of extra time? Because he set out the instructions, and they followed them. Mm -hmm. It's just—it's just—it's beyond a joke now. And like I said. My sole focus now is on the owners and getting rid of him because he's just that's a suck for his comments are a suck of an offense even more so i know he's made some comments before but i mean that's just a joke an absolute joke mm -hmm. just a joke let me pull up the comments uh just so it, we're all on the same page here because some of you in the chat and some of you on the panel maybe have not seen the comments um, okay, let's see. So, Pochettino on extra time. These players started to lose their energy, and the team felt maybe penalties would be good for us. Chile felt really, really tired. Gallagher, after five minutes, we needed to change. The effort was massive. Going on, Pochettino. I remember after three or four years, Liverpool lose the Champions League. They lose the Europa League, and they believed in the project. Mauricio Pochettino and Liverpool being an example for Chelsea. Liverpool being an example for Chelsea. They were in the next season stronger after losing the European Cup finals until they got what they wanted. That is a good example if we want to challenge a team like Liverpool. He's just doing that to save his own job. Fraud. He's doing what he did last season, what Potter did last season when he was comparing himself to Arteta. Yeah. It's ridiculous. Let me, can I just hang on? There's a Vix in the chat and he bought out something. Let me, let me say this right now. 
I don't care what the players felt. We were playing well at the end of the second half. We were battering them and should have won. So as a manager, you go, let's carry some momentum on to, into the extra time. And so we don't have to go to penalties because the penalties are a lottery. The penalties are a lottery and you can't really control them that much. So let's actually take the game to them as we have been the last 15 minutes of the second half, get the goal, and then you can shut up shop and start defending. He's a pussy because he allowed them. A big boy manager who's got big balls wouldn't wouldn't say this. Wouldn't even come out and say this. I don't even know why he's come out and said it, to be honest. It's, but he wouldn't it, accept this. Mar Mourinho wouldn't accept it. Klopp wouldn't accept it. Pep wouldn't have said it. Pep wouldn't have uh, accepted it. Stuff like that. An actual manager who's got balls wouldn't accept this. At all. He's got, That's the mentality he's built. He is a cuck as a manager, if that's the case. If he's allowing the, 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 if he's allowing the players to dictate to him, he's a cuck. He shouldn't be in this job. Well, it's, it's, it's one of two things. He's either allowed the players to dictate it or he's lied and thrown them under the bus. To protect yeah, he didn't his even own. take responsibility in that quote. He said the players felt, not I felt. He said the players felt. Mm -hmm. So he's throwing them under the bus in that. Yeah. So right. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this comment real quick, and then um, we have a guest in the backstage area. I'm gonna let you on, and you can have your say. Obviously, I'm curious as to how you feel about this from the rivals' point of view. So um, Vince here tweeting Pochettino's quotes: "The players were so close to winning the game after 90 minutes. We were disappointed and started to lose energy, but I am happy with the effort. It was massive. I feel the same as the players. It was so painful." When you don't get what you want, it is difficult to manage. Tomorrow, we need to train and move on for a Wednesday FA Cup tie against Leeds United at Stanford Bridge. That's the quarterfinal? Am I no. correct no. in that? I think it's fifth, fifth round. Fifth round, so after that is quarterfinal. Gotcha. So after that is quarterfinal. <clears throat> gotcha. Um, hey, Velva Sean. Welcome to the channel, brother. Long time no see. Um, Hello. Velv, I mean, I guess... And, and Scott's here. Big up, Scott. Velv, I guess... Give listen. I I know how you feel as as a Liverpool fan. All right. I don't, I don't want to know how you feel. I don't care. You won. Good for you. You did it for Klopp. All right. Go fuck yourself. Tell me what you think about Mauricio Pochettino. What did Chelsea do wrong in this game? What did Poch do wrong? What do you think about his comments? And I, I appreciate you. But go ahead. <laughs> uh, honestly, first of all, big up everyone here. Uh, make sure you smash the like button. And subscribe if you're new. Um, Appreciate you. I would like, to, yeah. I would like to summarize this game. Let's take the whole ninety minutes. I feel like, I feel like we were slightly the better side over the full ninety. I think both teams had opportunities. I think Chelsea had some of the better opportunities in that, particularly in the first half, where they should have been one 0 up. But big up to Queen Kelleher for making a world class save. And yeah, the second half thing, I think it's just back and forth. We were attacking, you were attacking. We had opportunities. You guys towards the end were battering us. You don't and, and then I don't know what happened. Like after the full 90, it's like you guys stepped back a bit. Which confused me. It, it confused me because. We have kids. <laughs> we have kids on the pitch. I don't know why you sat back, started defending. Like, yep. Like, even got mad. Like, even the dance, one of our academy kids who just made his debut against Luton, almost scored. Like, and that came an opportunity because you guys sat back. I was like, so confused. Just, and then after hearing the quotes after the game that he played for a pen, I'm like, now, now if you, if if you, if I didn't know who said those quotes. And you told me that, Marshall, I would have thought, and, and and Liverpool lost that game, I would have thought, that's Klopp, I can understand it, right? I can understand it, right? Inexperienced kids coming on, stuff like that. They haven't really got many, many options or stuff like that. When I see... thing, even, I, even I thought we were playing for the pen because I was like, oh, right. I can't do this. And I think, they, I think Klopp... their subs, I, don't, I think Klopp's subs were more to rest other players than to win the game. Because remember, they weren't. Yeah. I think Petrovic had one good save to make, and I think I was in extra time right near the end, but before they scored. Because remember, their real best big, I know they hit the post, but the big chances were obviously coming from set piece. So it's not as if I'm Petrovic is like man of the match for the game. So Keller's more man of the match than uh, Petrovic ever is in this game. So it's after the peppering us. So 
I think he was doing that because remember they played the FA Cup midweek as well and they've got like injuries as well. So I think he made those subs to rest players for even not even maybe, maybe not even to play the FA Cup, but just to play the next league game in a week's time. Because I think he's going to rotate it all on Wednesday. You're going to see more kids in Liverpool shirts on Anfield than you've seen in ages. But those comments, the, the, what, what? I, I'm struggling. I'm not struggling with the comments. I'm struggling with the mindset of someone to come out and say those comments and think and actually think is acceptable that their fan base is going to go, yeah, yeah, I, I can understand. Yeah, sure. Yeah, I can totally understand that. We weren't down to 10 men. You know what I mean? Or that, that we didn't have, because we can't use that disadvantage to go, well, even though they brought the kids on, we're down to 10 men and the guys are running around playing for 120 minutes. We haven't played midweek. We played eight days ago. It's local to us. We're not traveling that far. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's not a late time kickoff. We're not playing in two days' time. It just boggles my mind of a manager who's experienced in in dealing with press conferences and management for us, especially over like 10 years, for him to come out after a cup final and say that. It boggles my mind that he thinks that's acceptable. What boggles my mind even more, and I know it won't happen, I've already said it's going to happen, that I am not seeing more stuff tonight, or if I don't see stuff in the next 24 hours about him losing his job, it, it, that's where my focus goes off Poch because I'm not focusing on Poch anymore. He's shit. In my eyes, he's shit. Nothing's going to change it. Winning the FA Cup and finishing fifth will not change my mind about this guy whatsoever. Here's he's the thing. Crap. Yeah, I, he's crap. I, I, usually, I usually like defend Poch, but here's the bit. I could get why Chelsea fans get angry because stuff like this, when he says these stuff, it's like, I can understand why Chelsea don't like him or want him as a manager. In my opinion, I think you should stick with him because I feel like even, even though if you sack him, I don't think I think it's just gonna be a repeated cycle. Like you get a new manager, things will go well for a few weeks, and then all goes crashing down because I think the uh, problem a, is no, no, you can't keep a guy. Well. You can't keep a you cannot keep a manager who does those comments after that. Yeah, I agree. You just can't do it. You just cannot. But do not it. even that. But like it's it's not like Velvishan. Like I, I I hear what you're saying. And I hear what all these fans are saying about, like, oh, giving him time, it'll, it'll work, and all this. The thing is, I look at our last season with Graham Potter. I saw that there was a system. There was something there. Mind you, Graham Potter had the, the, the spine of a jellyfish. All right? This guy was not up to scrub to be at the highest level. But at least he had some type of system, some type of football that we saw, like, okay, Maybe if Graham Potter didn't have Mason Mount, who was putting up stinkers after stinkers after stinkers, maybe if Graham Potter didn't have to play Kai Havertz, or maybe if he had played Ob Obama Yang more often. I, I, I truly believe, and maybe I'm the only one in the panel that believes this, I truly believe if you give Graham Potter this team, we have a better season this season than, than gonna, what happened last up, season. I'm going to bring up something that would totally destroy this guy's comments right here. If the manager doesn't matter, how come Klopp was able to get those youngsters all psyched up then? If the manager doesn't matter, if it doesn't matter, how come? Right. You're just yeah. now. You're just. You're just. You're either trolling or you're pig ignorant. Or probably the trust in the players. If the manager as well, doesn't right? matter, how does Xabi Alonso go undefeated at Bundesliga against Tuchel and Bayern, who have arguably? the same type of record they would need in order to be in first in previous seasons. Just just look at some of if the... it doesn't matter, with the manager, it doesn't matter. How can you tell me that Juventus, who went from absolutely disastrous season last season with Allegri, all of a sudden makes some changes. Youth players here, other players sold, and now all of a sudden he's top of the league or tie, or up there with top of the league. Managers matter. Managers, no, this is where say, they make their money. He's just... He's, I'm just going to indulge. So I'm just going to indulge in one more time. I'm just going to indulge in one more time. So, so I'll give it a short example. I'll give it a short example. Go ahead, Pirate. It's pure ignorance now. I'll pure give a short example. Yep, yep. The squad that won the Champions League, we only have two <laughs> winners, two winners okay. that had mm -hmm. won the league with us in the Champions League squad, which was Aspilicueta and Conte. Everyone else in that team that won the Champions League with us had no experience in winning the league or winning a major trophy. Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, Timo Werner, Jill Well, Thiago Silva from PSG, okay, Mendy was new. Our entire back line was basically new. 
James had never won a Champions League or anything with us. So what is he talking about? If you want to talk about last season, Aston Villa, everyone was making jokes about Villa until they changed their manager. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh my God, Ollie Watkins, oh my God, these players, Douglas Luiz is so good. You know, he should go to Man City or Arsenal. He's the guy. That's what happens. So I don't understand. I'm giving you Premier League examples now. I'm giving you one recent as the last season of how a manager can change everything. So what are you talking about? And people think there's not another manager like this. If you want another project manager I, that's similar to Poch, in a sense, I'd rather go for the guy who's doing Girona. He's, he got a squad who was relegated, now challenging Real Madrid for La Liga if we want to go for that. So stop saying there's no managers in this world. Besides, even besides Xavi Alonso, there's a billion of them. I'm sorry. We had Ange Postacoglu in our list with Poch when we were first scouting for last year. I look at where yeah. he's doing with first. So don't give us this BS about there's no other managers. What manager are you talking about? We can't get more managers. There is going to be a manager flash sale in the summer. Yeah, our entire history is based on firing, mm. hiring, and firing managers. I don't care if it doesn't work nowadays. It worked for us against Tuchel only two seasons ago. So stop saying like it's the past revelation. Freaking Real Madrid have done that with Ancelotti, Benitez, and everyone. What are you talking you see about? That, you see that curry part? You see that comment that Vic had about Oh, donut. There's context here. Klotz has been raising these guys for eight years. No, oh, he yeah, hasn't. I got you. Yeah. He has not been raising these guys for eight years. He might only know about them about a year ago or even less than. And he didn't plan to have these guys in his squad a week ago. All right. Yeah. So don't give me that. Okay. But my 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 it still stands though. It still stands. The mentality comes from the manager. He yeah. built those guys up probably for the whole week before. Or with less than saying you're going to be in Did it. Did you he guys see when, when Klopp subbed them up? He gave them like a big hug. He's like, yeah, go for it. That's the point. That's his. That's, I keep saying it. You now, your manager's now, man, the modern day manager now, is a hybrid of man management and coaching. That's what it is. The old school is good. Get someone in there and kick them up the ass. Doesn't work. And the cuck doesn't work in terms of potch as well. It doesn't work. You need a balance. Okay. And Klopp is one of the best. He's just burnt out. I say this on another stream. If Klopp, if we swap managers, even for those 30 minutes, Klopp would be able to get those the Chelsea players up more than Poch for those different ones. No and doubt. Here's the thing as well. I think another no. factor is like there's like uh, there's no trust between the players and the managers because obviously see, he does not want to bring these players on and the players don't want to play for him. It's so obvious. Uh, it's a thing. I think Pochettino deserves a massive smoke today, but I think there's two other players that deserve cooking and I think it's obvious who they are to be honest that's Enzo and Caicedo Caicedo actually so... played well Caicedo played well too. yeah his job. yeah I'll, I'll hear Enzo not not Caicedo yeah yeah Caicedo was the I best think, I think Caicedo is more more like more like aggression from you because uh Aaron <clears throat> came injured but with Enzo the the two biggest moments were the one where he had the ball and the lady off to yeah I think that was the second one. The first one where Sterling was literally open. There was no... Oh, yeah, yeah. First half. Yeah, he went left. Could have played he went it to outside. him, but just... Yeah. He went the outside. And the then the second, the, the, the second one was criminal. Look up Sterling. Oh, right the one with Mudrick? Yeah, I think... Was it Mudrick or Palmer? In the right. It was Palmer. It was earlier in the game. Yes, yeah, uh, Sterling and Palmer, both non-marked. Literally play it to them and then shoot. Like, come on, man. Like, these things, this is where you need your players to sell. You can't, like, finish the whole game and get bodied by Bobby Clark, McConnell, Dance. Like, I'm sorry. You, you, that, but my thing about this earlier is where I think the players, he hasn't lost the players, is because they're following instructions. So you can get bodied when you're following instructions to what the manager wants. He wanted us just to get to midfield, uh, to, um, um, to penalties. There was no that he didn't think of anything about attacking, getting the ball, passing it. So we just sat back and let you have the ball. That that's the manager, and the players are with the manager because they're following it to a T. They are following it to a T like that. Uh, yeah. that that's my that's my that's my problem. You see it in the attack as well because it's like you have a. I noticed a lot like barring a few moments from Palmer, which that's just his own like instinctive creativity. <laughs> We were trying to cross the ball in and we've got Van Dijk and Canate marking out the box and they can deal with the ball when it's both crossed on the ground and in the air. So like, you know, 
is there any other avenues? Like, is it at that really point where you know? the, the players just revert to type and have no creativity because there's no patterns or anything? You know, you know, this will sound mad. I think when you took off Jackson, that's when I was like, yeah, Howler, Howler, Howler. 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 Yeah, Howler. 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 He had a good battle with Kanate and got him uh, booked. Or he, he was on the other card. Opinion, yeah. I, I, I got cooked on Twitter for this guy. I said Kanate was poor. Like, he was okay, but he wasn't like the Kanate, like the beast Kanate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ones that gets really? Because really? Jackson did well against him, and then he's like, he was like, no. But mm. when he came off, it's like when I, that's when our centre back started breathing. That's why Klopp was allowed to bring on Kwanza in the extra time, because they know that yeah. Chelsea. What did you do? I totally no, lost momentum as well. It was like no, uh, no, no one up there. And here's the thing with the, with, with the context of the tactics that we were trying to implement during the game, the Jackson one was bad. Like, we could have made the Nkunku thing work if we weren't just playing him with the back to the centre backs. Jackson is a taller guy. He's obviously much more capable of doing that. With Nkunku, you want to get him touches on the ball. And uh, we, we, <clears> we, we, we initially put him on the left and then we put him at striker. The striker thing, he just completely vanished from the game. And at that point, it's just like we're just now preserving him on the pitch to get him to penalties. And again, that's negative. Yeah, and then also another factor of this: your centre backs were very nervous today. I could tell Disasi, Colwell, they in the beginning for sure. Very, no, yeah, that's shady. Yeah. yeah, and here's the thing: because which I, mm -hmm, I think they're ahead. good players, but when this is when like you need Chilwell to be like your leadership at the back because he's your most experienced. What a dick. Mm -hmm. Whoever, whoever made him captain, I'm sorry. Like, uh, he's, no, he's vice-captain. He's vice-captain. Vice 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 I, I, I thought you said we should make him captain. That's, I mean, that's he's what he's saying, Scott. Because Reece James injured for a minute. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's yeah. Vice captain. What are you yeah, saying, Scott? That's, that's the biggest issue for me. That's the biggest issue for me in the game today. Because, like, people know my thoughts and feelings on Poch. And I, I'm beating a dead horse at this point to carry on with, with it and with him. Um, for me, like, my focus for this game and for the rest of the season and that comes to these players and this ownership not the ownership but like the directors and the reason i say that is we've seen before about mentality and a manager does have a lot to play in mentality but some of it comes down to these players and just having pride just having personal pride in a cup final and the league's different right the league's different you can have games where like they you just play shit against teams because like it's a league game there's less pressure for a final i don't care whether you've been shit in the league i don't care whether you're ill i don't care whether you're missing half a leg you should be up for a final whether you play for chelsea or chesterfield and that's where i look at and i go and look at our leaders on the pitch in comparison to liverpool's leaders and i say you didn't turn up chill well waste of space he's our vice captain he's a waste of space I look at Sterling, he waste of space, was, complete was, waste of space. Today. I look at Enzo, who's played in a World Cup final. Enzo's played in a World Cup final, plays today in a Carabao Cup final, and it was pathetic. It was absolutely pathetic. And this is where I say, if we're going to compete in these competitions, which we want to, obviously, as fans, people can say they don't care about the Carabao Cup final bullshit. You, are you telling me you're not taking a trophy? Fuck off. If we want to compete in these cup finals, you need a certain type of player. You need those Van Dykes. You need those um, Rudigers that we had in the, in the Champions League final. You need those guys in in certain areas of the pitch that are going to step up. And for me, we miss those type of players for games like this. And yes, Poch has a lot to take on his blame, but rightfully so. But if we're going to be in positions like this going forward, that summer that's coming up is... We keep saying this every year, it feels like, but it is for me. This summer is the biggest summer in this ownership and this sporting director's short tenure at this football club. No more kids, no more inexperience, no more people that have barely played 10 games, let alone 100. I need proven players. I need players that have been in situations like this, have been in cup finals, have been on the precipice of winning things. I don't care if they haven't won things. They've been on the precipice because they know what it feels like to lose. I need players that have played at least 150 games. For example... We we got we brought in a very young midfield, but we got in the experience in Watara Endo. And by the way, I was about to say your best your, your best midfielder today was Endo, who's thirty. Spent his entire season, I think, playing in the Bundesliga. But he's been yeah, a captain for, for a thing. club. I say he's been a captain for that club for like six years, five six years, something like that. Like he's been a captain there for a while. 
He's played in the Bundesliga and the second Bundesliga, but in the Bundesliga for a number of years. And that's what I'm talking about. I don't care if you get players from Stuttgart, from Bayern Munich, from the top level or whatever. But I'm talking about going and getting players that have experience. Like in key areas as well. For me in the summer, striker, left wing, left back. Oh, yeah. Those are like my main positions, I think, as well. Like, I, I, like, I, I um, like you talk, you know, you talk I about can't be seeing more under 23 yeah. players. If I see, unless we're signing Mbappe and them, man, cool. <laughs> I can't be seeing more under 23 players come in the summer. I can't. Even Mbappe's at turning 25, you, right? You, I know you see, um, uh, experienced players. Um, it's like I've, I've been seeing, like, uh, Lad, I know, like, you, how you guys, like, maybe talked about Latar Martinez. I think he's quite experienced. and he's been I'll take him at this point. He's been doing it for a fair few years, and this season's just killing it. Like, we might have to, like, I don't know, like, we have to play, like, two strikers up front. We we, we might have to, because, like, he, yeah, he, does, sure, think he does that he all can the make, season. You but, can make, yeah. make him work in a one. But, like, but, I don't really care who we get at this point. I was trying to, like, after the yeah. game today, I was trying to, like, kind of spitball ideas in my head of players I'd like to get for those side. And like, I came up with a few, but like nothing outside of the obvious, like Ossim and Davies and, and that. But it's like, when you look at the, some of the chances we had today and some of the decision-making of some of these players, like we look at, take the experienced players out because they were dog shit, but you look at like Gallagher. Yes, he's our most experienced midfield. He's still not that experienced. He's still 23 or whatever he is. Like the, the chances he misses today, Especially the one where he's one on one with Kelleher, I t I said it in the in the uh, the Discord uh, after that chance. You can see he has no confidence in that when he gets the ball. You can tell he has no confidence that he's going to score the moment he gets the ball, and that's the problem because he doesn't have any confidence. Yeah, if you yeah, give like that, in, in that position, if it's in Kunku, if it's Martinez, if it's Aussie men, mm -hmm. if it's Salah, if it's Aguero, I know I'm naming some world class players, but when you have guys in that position that know what they're doing and have been there, done it, bought the t-shirt, sent it back, got another one, like, they know what they're doing. If Nkunku's in that position, he scores at least one of the chances Gallagher has today because he knows what he's doing. There's no killers in your team. Like, even like, nope. you could say Gallagher missed the chance, also Palmer missed the chance in the first half. I think, I think there was one more. I forgot who it was, but they had a good opportunity. Uh, yeah, I guess the Sarfi... Disarcy missed a great chance. Oh, yeah, this this I, I, I would have as much. He should score that. Yeah, I would have why he missed. Yeah, I'm not blaming him, but that was an yeah. example. Yeah, but like that's the thing, and it's like it's it's that it's because the thing is as well, and the reason I say that we need those pl players is because what it allows, and you saw it with Liverpool today, and some of this also comes from the manager, and I, I I'm not absolving part of anything, especially those comments. They're fucking embarrassing, and you should be sacked for those alone. Um. But the reason why for Liverpool you can have McDonnell and Dans and you can have Clark and you can have all these men come on is because they know two things. Number one, there's no pressure. There's number one. Number two is they've got the guys behind them. They've got their Van Dykes and Endos and McAllisters and Canates and Robertson until he came off and this, that and the other. They've got these guys and they see what Bradley's doing that they can be like, cool, if I fuck up, it's okay. That's not a problem because I've got them guys behind me. What happens if our guys fuck up? What happens if Mudrick fucks up? Number one, every person on Twitter and everyone on our fan base decides to shit on him. By the way, I just have to say he was at fault for that goal that we conceded. But then what happens if he does fuck up? Who's behind him? It's Chilwell. Great. It's Enzo who is having a shit game. Great. It's Gallagher. Great. Like, as I said, if we want to be in these positions more often in terms of cup finals, and I think we do, then, then this type of shit can't run. This type, I, I can't be looking at a bench that has Billy G, big up Michael Jackson, on the fucking bench, <laughs> like sitting there chilling. I can't see some Finnish dude that I thought was a goalkeeper and turns out he's a midfield slash forward chilling on the bench, <laughs> like calm. Well, we had I, a I can't, year old doing the bench because here's a bit like me, me and Hussam, we like talking on it. He's like, because he's not on Twitter, he's like, oh, send me the lineup. I was like, oh, send me. We just both look at the lineup, like, oh, fuck it, no. After we see Chelsea's lineup, it's like, oh, shit. Like, it's, it's, like, it's, it's actually like, I'll be, it's quite embarrassing for Chelsea. Like, you can't be able to do this against youngsters. Bear in mind, inexperienced youngsters. Because here's the thing if you had lost to, like, say, to Mo Salah, Nunez, to Bosla, I think you'll find this to be less like embarrassing. But because it's against. Things about us, for sure. Uh, 
I mean, he had to play Connor Bradley right wing. <laughs> like, he, yeah. I was even screaming like Klopp was like, bro, go to a back three, but play the right wing, do his job in it. <clears throat> Sorry, well, I, I just have to say, like, I kind of agree with that, but this was the exact same squad that went toe to toe with Man City last week with Holland and everyone, right? It shows the inexperience of these guys. That's what it shows. It shows a lack of coaching by our coach as well. Because we went to toe with to toe with Man City twice. We were outplayed you with the first game at the very least. Because the second game, we know he didn't coach that properly at all. Every big kind of big team. And Aston Villa, once again, coached properly. We destroyed them in the cup. Right? That shows the inexperience of these players, but also the manager. Because I get that we lost to kids. And I agree, it's very embarrassing. But this was the exact same team a week and a day ago that went toe to toe with Man City, right? With the Holland, we have with the De Bruyne fit, with everyone fit for them, basically. We have a it's weird. we have a problem at this football club. We have a problem. We've had it since Tuchel's been in. We've had it since Mount and that were here because we had the same problems. And I know we talked about the same things on different streams and whatnot. And that's that when we are the underdogs, we seem to thrive when most of the time. Um, when we are the team that nothing, ex no one expects anything of, we normally shine. When there is pressure on 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 us and on players to do things, and when they have to step up, they go missing. They go missing at this football club, and I can't explain why. I can't explain who's at, at fault because it's multiple different players under multiple different managers under multiple different owners at this point. I can't explain it. I can't explain why it is. I just I'm noticing it. Because it's the same you know, cool. question. Can I ask you guys a question? You know, no, like, no, say no. if you lose, does any of your players like go around to the away fans, like, just applaud, or and does who like play they into this for Chelsea? They, I know they used to. I don't know about anymore, but that might just because they used to lose at this point. I know Poch never has really. I mean, Poch never has. Like he's never set the standard for it. To be honest, like he's never done it for us. To be honest. I know sometimes Gallagher and Caldwell and it's some of these guys have... Gilchrist and all them. Gilchrist, like, I think... Oh, like, like, he's, he's, he's he's experienced players well. need to, like, say something in this because, like, they're just being cowards. His, I feel no, sorry for Thiago Silva. Like, his, he, he's too old now, like, he needs to be moved on. But you miss, like, you miss a player like that, with that leadership, that one who would take responsibility, those types of players. Because Chua is a pussy. Like, I'm sorry. Like, oh, yeah. he's, he's, he's fucked off when he's I'm Marshall. Can you bring up JC's comment again? Because this is facts, by the way. This is one of the things I'm talking about when it comes to experience and people and, and having people in this situation. It's for cup finals. The league is totally different unless you're going for winning the league. Like, this is exactly it. And we saw this from Liverpool when they went ahead and in moments during the game as well. If we had a player like a Rudiger or even a David Luiz or a them type of player, bro. They're doing every scumbaggery piece of shit dark art under the sun at times. If we're trying to do what Potch says we're trying to do and get to penalties, I'm trying to do every scumbag piece of shit tactic to wind up Liverpool, to waste time, whatever. None of our players were doing that today, or very few. McConnell, because McConnell then they don't know today. how to, because yeah. none of them have been in the situation. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. The manager's never taught them how to do it because he's never been in a position where he's needed to do that. Because again, the only cup final he's ever been to of recollection was the, um, what's it called? The fucking UCL final where they were underdogs the entire time. And they and I conceded like instantly, I think, from what I remember. Um, I think he got to like one Coupe de France or whatever it's called final in, in France and with yeah, against won. PSG. Yeah. You have to do the dark arts kind of scumbaggery, scumbaggery PSG just, just handing your resignation. It's like he's never had to do it. We've got players apart from Enzo. Like who, you've got a couple of players like Sterling who should know how to do it, but obviously he didn't, and he was off the pitch anyway. These players don't know how to do it because they've never had to, and that's the problem in situations like this. Jeremy, you're, you're um, you're me, Marshall. Sorry, this is, oh my god, you know what really Ready? fucking sends me. <laughs> um, I look now at the bench options. We had two goalkeepers, Alfie Gilchrist. No, one. Oh no, did we have no, Martinelli and Sanchez? Sanchez and Martinelli oh, we were on the bench. Yeah. Alfie Gilchrist uh, was on the bench. We had uh, Guy G, whoever the fuck that guy is. G, Billy G. We had <laughs> we had bare options, and in a game like today where Enzo is having a stinker, 
I guarantee you if we have the option, no, actually, I can't even guarantee it. If it were me and I had the option to sub in a midfielder, <coughs> Andre Santos, <coughs> I fucking do it. Even Cassidy, like, where was he today? Well, he's cup tied. I think he's cup tied. He's, he's cup tied. I think that was. Oh, oh yeah. Sorry. I completely forgot so, we had that I conversation. Get that. Yeah. <laughs> but another thing that sends me to is okay, maybe you take off Chilwell because he's he's leggy. He's tired. Which, again, you're tired. How you play one game a week? We're not in uh, Europe. But okay, whatever. Sure. Oh, also, also, Liverpool had a game midweek. You didn't. Okay. And now I'm looking at that Matson transfer and I'm thinking, yep, Poch, what uh -huh. in the living fuck were you thinking of not actually trying this player out at left back or even giving him a chance in the attack? Because even Sterling would have been subbed off for a Matson, and that would have been a decent sub. Now he's balling out at Borussia Dortmund. And now I'm looking at that decision thinking mm. people are going to say, oh, he's a yes man, all this and that. Listen, our our ownership wants to sell Conor Gallagher, yet he plays Conor Gallagher regardless. What's the excuse for Matson? Yeah. Matson would have been so perfect for that bench today. Or Andre Santos. But this this has been our problem with, with Poch, like the whole the whole season and and it comes down to just decision making as well and this is where i will get on him and i will get on him for the subs because i think was i think curry pirate mentioned this yeah. earlier when it comes to young players and it comes to trust or it might have been velvish and i can't remember one of you mentioned it it's quite it's been evident the entire season that potch doesn't trust these young players which if that's how your manager feels and most of your team is young that's a match made in hell and it's never going to work like i if he'd have brought on right Let's just say for shits and giggles, right? He takes off Enzo and brings on G or brings on that Terrarian guy, whatever his name was. Um, let's just say he brings him on. I could understand, right? I didn't even really care that much about the Chalaber sub, in all honesty. The only thing that is a bit odd to me is why you bring in Chalaber on, not Gilchrist, considering he's the guy you've trusted for this entire season so far off the bench all the time. And now Chalaber, you've played two games in a row. His first two games back after injury, City away and. Uh, What's his name? Um, Liverpool in a cup final. Nice. Um, but yeah, that's the thing is like, if you don't trust these, if you don't trust, you're seeing these guys, these young players week in, week out. Number one, if you don't trust these guys, actually, sorry, an another thing, the size I've just clocked, another two rando youth players that we've never seen before on the bench. Are you, you're telling me that Castle Dine couldn't have been on the bench because we've seen him before. You're telling me that Washington couldn't have been on the bench. It's like... Like, I, yeah, why do we need two goalkeepers on the bench? Why not have Washington another that's, option? That's, that's that's, a, that's another conversation. But yeah, like if you don't trust these guys and you watch them week in week out, why are we meant to trust them? We see nothing from these guys. For all I know now, based on the fact that you didn't trust these guys, G and Terrarian are, are, are bums. They they they're bums. They they shouldn't be anywhere near the first team. If you can't bring them in, like I'm I'm seeing Liverpool clock bring these guys on, so they obviously are trusted. They might not be the greatest players. Like, I mean, that Dan's kid looked okay. He wasn't spectacular. But it's quite evident he's trusted. You can't trust mm -hmm. these two dudes. Like... There's a stat for you. We played, I think, 17 academy players in the first team this season. Oh, we, we have a new academy player on the bench every single week. Without that. <laughs> <laughs> this is... But that's the thing, Scott. Like, you mentioned it right there. I don't mind a child of a sub. But if you have an Ian Matson, you don't need to make that channel a sub. Uh -huh. You keep Malagusto on that right back position, and then you put on Matson for Chilwell. And it's just it's just planning at the end Instead of the day. Of, and you know, where, this is where some of it comes down to the um, sporting directors as well. Lord. Like I know he's not everyone's cup of tea, but if you have Brozier on the bench today, there's no, and you bring him on, he might not be the best, right? But he's probably better than playing friggin' Unkunku in that position and just hoofing balls up to him or for fana or for fana. We didn't, we didn't, we didn't yeah, or, you to... fana, or you like this is the thing and it comes back to just planning there's no planning done with any of this team this entire season we've just gone on like <laughs> flying by the seat of our pants there's we, been no we, plan mm -hmm. it's the same thing with the madsen situation as well like as much as we 
give Pochettino smoke for not giving him an opportunity. At the end of the day, these directors sanctioned the loan deal. So, you know, Poch didn't sanction the loan deal as much as he wasn't going to use him. Even if he wasn't going to use him, at least if the directors didn't sanction that loan deal, he would have been. He probably would have been on the bench today because of our own, our own situation. You know, not having another left back or whatever, or having because Matting can pl- apparently play on the wing or whatever. So the di- you know the, the whole club has to hold smoke for it. I massively disagree with this. At no point do I want Chilwell taking a penalty unless he's about the seventh person taking a pen. If he's one of the fir- if he if you're relying on Chilwell taking a penalty in the first five, then I want to know who the fucks didn't didn't step up and you can fucking start, hold your hold. Sit your ass on the bench. We had five ple- people capable of taking a sub by the end of that game. The entire front four plus Enzo. There you go. No defender and no one else should need to take a penalty. You don't think uh, Chua would be more... I'd be more confident no. for Chua over Enzo. No. 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 Chua lost no, his no, head to a 20-year-old Connor Bradley. No. no I think he's taking a penalty. No, Chris. Chris. Like, not, not even that. Not even that. We've seen this season... Look at the front four we finished with, right? So, we've already seen this season Madaweke take a penalty. We've already seen Palmer take multiple penalties. We've already yeah, seen Palmer. Nkunku, we know he can take a penalty. I, I haven't seen him for Chelsea. I know he can no, take yeah, a penalty. Seen, so seen, no, no, no. Nkunku did score in a shootout in the, in the lead in oh, the Carabao Cup. Taken, as has yeah. Mudrick. He's taken yeah, a penalty yeah. in a shootout and scored. That's those four. And I've already seen Enzo take a penalty and score. Those <laughs> are my five penalty takers straight off the bat. If any one of them don't step up to take a penalty in that moment, Bro, I'm losing my head. Big if up, none Lewis. Of you appreciate. Go, go ahead, Scott. Finish your finish. Your I'd statement. say if none of you are confident enough to step up in a final and take a pen after you've taken pens elsewhere, I would lose my friggin' mind. Yeah. Um, big up, everyone. Big up for the raid, Lewis. Uh, Carefree Lewis, I'm sure they had hey, a. Yo, Lewis, you guys were just there, uh, actually. Yo, Lewis, I want that Carabao sure. Cup winners medal you bought yesterday. I'd like to have it. Please. Oh my <laughs> days! You bought a Carabao Cup medal. Oh, Lewis, goddamn. We, we, we should, we should, Lewis should be holding that out, man. Like we should be winning that. Uh, the team. Lewis, by the way, if you want the link, just uh, shoot me a message here in the chat. I'll send it over to you. But oh man, big up! Thank you for the raid. I appreciate it. Um, <clears throat> I think uh, Chris, were you trying to say something before? I, I don't know if you got it out, but. Um, I think I forgot. I was trying to say something before. Um, I think it's completely just floating by now. Like I was trying to say, not about the chill, I think, because I thought maybe chill could take a penalty, but I, I, I forgot what I was going to say before that. I think. So yeah, that's yeah, fine. It's, it's just right. by now. It happens. I mean, I, I, I I'm gonna. Pens, I'll be shook because I don't even know who will take pens in our team. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's yeah. the thing. Like I can, I can actually understand. I, you know what the thing is, I can kind of understand the game plan to an extent. What I can't understand is a few things I can't understand. Number one, don't say that you're doing well, actually, that. Actually, Scott, actually, I, I want to ask you about that. On, on to what you were saying. On top of that, where do you think Poch also messed up? Um, I I think everything up to the extra time, I don't really have, didn't have a problem with Poch, to be honest. I thought he was okay. The only issue that like we spoke about in the Discord, the only real issue that I had was that it, we seemed to have a game plan of hoofing the ball to Jackson over and over again which is pissing me off but apart from that i don't think we really did any bad or did too bad um the issues came in extra time where it was quite clear we sat off for the entire extra time and we know why um and that was basically it. and then the comments afterwards like i don't really have an issue if that's what you're trying to do right because it, it kind of mm-hmm. makes sense right in terms of you look at liverpool's team who's taking a penalty on that team you think probably McAllister. Probably Van Dyke. I'm struggling after that, right? There's not too many options. So I, I, I came off, but yeah, kind of understand it. It might have been, I can't remember, so maybe Diaz. So maybe Diaz. The takers, point is, we've got we've got the better right penalty now. takers. <laughs> On paper, we've got the better penalty takers, and we've this time we've actually got a keeper who can save penalties. So like you kind of understand it. Two things. Number one, don't fucking tell us that's what you're going to do because you look like a pussy. Number two is don't do that for the whole 30 minutes. Do that from about the 115th minute. It's the same as the City game. I've got no issue with you sitting back against City. Don't do it from 70 minutes. Do it from 85. Same with this. Don't do the whole play of the penalty <coughs> from the start of it. Time. He was worried. Do it yeah. from the 110th, 115th minute because that makes more sub. I don't think McAllister... Actually, was he? 
Oh no, he uh, was. Yes, it was. was. Yeah, was, 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 was. Or maybe Elliot then. Elliot might have taken Even one Even Gakpo then. was subbed off and so was Andy Robson. Shimikas. Yeah, so a possibly penalty takers would have been Endo because he has the hundred percent success rate for penalties. Yeah, see, so actually, yeah. he might. I think he might have been the penalty. Uh, yeah, he was a penalty taker at Stuttgart. So yeah, so you had like Endo, Van Dijk, probably Diaz. You're looking at Elliot probably, but again, it's not people I go massively <coughs> confident. But as I said, just again, don't oh, fucking oh, tell people that that's that. what the plan was. Don't just. Just don't make the comments that you made at the end of the game, bro. All, most of our co like our comment conversation about Pot in the streams that I've been on, the two streams I've been on, have become because of his comment. <laughs> <laughs> Hypothetical penalties. <laughs> just the, just the, yeah, yeah, we are. By the way. <laughs> Can I say let's this? let's oh. not let's not hypothetically yeah. smash the like button. If you're coming here from the raid, be sure to <laughs> smash that like button. Actually, smash the like button. Don't hypothetically do it. Uh, what were you uh, saying? Are you Brian? Just and subscribe if you're new. Actually, uh, big up everyone. Um, wait, Scott, are you finished or no? Yeah, I'm finished. Okay, yeah, big up Prime. Um, time, uh, big up though. <laughs> uh, I, <laughs> I saw you did on the Sam channel last week. That was funny. I actually um, thought Gallagher was good today. Um, so, no, actually, the intro, besides, by the way. Uh, yeah, no, he, he aside from the sitters he missed, yeah, he was good. Um, before yeah. I actually get into what I want to say, uh, I just heard what Scott said about like sitting back and stuff. Here's the thing: I don't have a problem if like we nick a goal and Potch wants to sit and defend and see the game out. I don't necessarily mind doing like for me, like I obviously have a preference on style of play. Like, I don't really care how we play so long as, like, we're effective and we win. Uh, here's the thing, though. He doesn't coach us in any real aspect anyway. So if he's not coaching us in the attacking sense, I doubt he's coaching us in how to coach these players and how to sit back in a low block and actually defend <coughs> sort of pressure and counterattack effectively. Um, in terms of the game, um, we started off poorly. We were quite shaky for the first, like, 10 15 minutes or so and i thought this game would be similar to the one at i think anfield where we got blitzed early on but we grew into the game um palmer's chance in the 20th minute i thought he should have put his foot through that if he hit that properly mm -hmm. he probably would have scored um we had we grew into it in the second half had chances um that Sterling goal, by the way, in the first half, I don't think that I disagree. I don't think that was offside at all. I think it should have stood. Really? However, in saying that, Van Dyke's header also should have stood, so it should have been one-one. Um, we had chances in the second half to score and win the game. Um, Gallagher has to score at least one. He has to score at least one. When you're getting in those positions, like you have to take them. And then being one-on-one -on -one with. Uh, uh with kelleher and not being able to bury it in extra time Ke listen keller is i don't care what liverpool fans say he is not a good goalkeeper he's not i see i see this guy for the national team he is not a good goalkeeper he's so how have we played him in three finals and we've made this guy look <coughs> he is not a good goalkeeper at all um i think he's better for us than he is for country because i watch him for country he's actually average but i like him for us because Come out to this area. Uh, well, I don't, I don't care about Liverpool, I care about my country, and he's not good for my country. Okay, so, fair enough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> no, um, yeah, uh, listen, in 90 minutes, Poch more or less got it spot on. Um, he's fine, I don't know that he's not coaching him. His tactics may suck, that's exactly what he's doing. He's coaching, okay, so he's not coaching effectively. Then I'll use that from now on. Um, but 90 minutes, I think he got it basically spot on. The chances we had, we should have they should have taken them to win it. Um, but then we go on an extra time and this whole, this is what, when people were going into this game, trying to say Chelsea are favorites and trying to use this uh, narrative of Liverpool being underdogs, like they always like to do underdog gimmick with all the injuries they had out. I think I was one of the very few Chelsea fans that said, no, we're not favorites. We're going to lose this game because the difference between us and Liverpool is that they have an elite coach. Even if we want to say that our 
team going into it will be worse, or their team going into it will be worse than Chelsea's. They still have an elite coach that will make it. And we've seen, particularly over the last few years in the Premier League, how much pro team makes a difference. Emery takes a relegation for an uh, Aston Villa team, and they're now in a title race, potentially, or at least firmly in top four. Uh, Eddie Howe takes a Neuron relegated Newcastle team and takes them into the Champions League. Yes, I'm Irish. Like, we see how much coaching makes an actual difference. We shouldn't be where we are in the table, and that's a reflection on Poch. And we see it now in this final. If Liverpool had their, um, their because people say, what well, our chances, the chances Liverpool had to win the game, and with great goalkeeping by Petrovic, who was brilliant today, we lose badly. We lose. But if they had Salah on the field, they had Nunes, we lose that game badly. They had Trent, we lose that game badly. I disagree. I disagree with it. Um, I disagree. Disagree. Okay, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. I saw but Salah pop in. Yeah. I, I saw Salah pop in by Alonso in two finals. So okay, that's fine. Whatever, reg- well, regardless. My point kind of back well, coaching Andrew, not Alonso. again <laughs> in the extra time. Coaching makes a difference. People can say kids are coming on for Liverpool, <coughs> etc., etc., their babies. But coaching still makes a difference. How are they bringing on some guy called Dan or whatever? They're bringing him. He's bring coming on into an environment where they've got a system in place by a world class manager, surrounded by Van Dijk and Shimakas and uh, McAllister or whoever else is in the team at that point surrounded by experience and leaders he's not being sent in there to drown unlike what potter has been doing because we complain at chelsea chelsea fans complain that our leaders Thiago silva's uh not good enough shouldn't be playing sterling's uh not good enough gallagher's not good enough chill not good enough our leaders aren't good enough and we talk about our young players being inconsistent and then we talk about our manager leaving um you know certain people like caicedo alone in midfield or playing call out of position Etc. Etc. So what? What are we gonna really do? As much as we need experience in this team, we also need our manager to stop making excuses and complaining all the time and actually step up and be a proper coach, be a proper leader to these young players. Every single time, I'm sick and tired of it. So it's so frustrating to watch. It's very, very frustrating to watch. But I, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm done. Sorry. Anywhere By the way, I disagree with you. Big up, everyone. Um, Got to go now. Hmm? Big up, Val. Thanks for coming on, man. Have a good night. Oh, yeah, thank, you, up, thank you for having me. And uh, that's why I'd say hold that Chelsea fans. But, yeah. Oh, fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, what uh, are you saying, Scott? Enjoy your one yeah, trophy this season. Yeah, one trophy. One title. One Congratulations. You're giving me the picking. Fuck off. Uh, get, out way, here, quickly, I also, get out of here, bro. Get out of here, Sean. Get out! Hey, that's just one more than Harry Kane. Kane is a bottler. But yeah. See ya. So that's what yeah, I'm doing, man. Uh, I do want to say, I do, actually, I do actually disagree with you about the two goals. The first one is... The first one's a weird one. Because from, from the angles that we saw, it's inconclusive. Which means if it's inconclusive, you have to go with the on-pitch decision, which was offside. But the angles were dog shit, so it's a weird one. Uh, and the second, I, I one don't think. Like, I okay. I, well, the Sterling one, I really don't think is inconclusive. I, I, I generally don't think it's offside. But fine, even though whatever semantics. But like, I, I, it's, it's so frustrating because, like, ah, oh, Liverpool were there for the taking, and Poch is coming out. Oh, they were hundred percent. That's that's the Poch best chance coming out with, like, He's coming out with Mourinho quotes about finals and you know they're not to play they are to win and i remember i quote tweeted that co- comment or whatever and i said it's all well and good trying to speak like Mourinho, but actually win this final now yeah. Mourinho would not have lost this final <laughs> no like, and even if he had even if he'd lost this final because i saw someone on lewis's stream in the chat said bring back Mourinho." i said well, i was thinking no i still think with Mourinho, we potentially lose this the difference is the comments after the game. The difference is the attitude after the game is the biggest thing. 
Like you can't do all that talking beforehand and all those comments you made about like finals and shit, and then and then do what you did in extra time, and then have those comments. Those th those things don't exactly. correlate, and it's been the story of Poch the entire season. He'll make some if comments, you're... and then he'll make some other comments, and they don't make any sense. It, it... If you're coming out and you're saying that you want to play for like don't tell us that but like if if your game plan for this was to take it to penalties that's fine because my prediction was would either lose three nil or we'd win on pens if your game plan was to take it the penalties that's fine but execute that properly i do do yep. like start thinking out the game start time wasting time management like start doing those things we've seen we've seen yeah. Mourinho do that so like many I times said earlier, it's, the, it's the dark arts it's, it's those scum the the scum waste time. i remember um john terry came out and spoke about how uh like when the, the, when we won the title in 14 15 jose would tell cahill and 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 terry that um when one player would go when one of them would go down other ones should go down too because apparently there's a rule that the game can't start until if both players are on the ground getting treatment or something. And like, it, it's just those little things like that. You have to be aware and use everything in your book to, to, to win. And Poch just, he's too much like, and the players, like um, someone, I think Scott said on Lucy stream or something like these, the players like him. They won't turn against him. Of course they won't turn against him. Poch is a nice, oh, I get why Chelsea fans fell for him. During preseason, I get why Spurs fans like love him. He's a very, very likable guy. He's a likable guy. But in football, being at not just in football, in life, to get at the elite level, it's not just about being nice. Sometimes you need to do what it takes to win. Sometimes you need to be a bit of a bastard. And Poch is just not that. He's never going mm -hmm. to be that. Exactly. I do want to say as well. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, there was like one or two positives i did actually have from the game as, as weird as it sounds considering how how it ended and that's the three out of the four of that defense today on the defensive standpoint were immense like oh, yeah 100%. absolutely immense. that's a hey, tiago silva hey, this, it was been nice knowing you my friend old bench and then leave you're done you should be done at no. this football club we we definitely have decided what the rest of our seasons back four is going to look like, and it should be those those guys. Yeah, you can we have can a, you can debate. have a conversation when Badi Shile is back about Badi Shile or Cole Will. I don't really care either way. Gorilla but as like, well. that, yeah, Kuk oh he needs to come back in because Chilwell's ass. But like, when when Kukure is fit, like that is the back four for the rest of the season. Yeah, like, I'm sorry. It, it looked Chill, good. Chill, well, uh, like, I'm... eat shit. Whole bench. Silver, go away. Like whole bench. Uh, does um uh, people I want... don't know how long? Sorry, how long? How long does uh, Kukurella even have left? Because like we ain't got much. He's back in training, I think. I back in training. Yeah, he is. Uh, it was reported to be around this time he returns. But, uh, yeah, like uh, I was gonna say, there's not many games left actually in our season. It's like like what, like twelve or fourteen? I don't know. Like. uh so yeah, okay, never mind then. I thought this isn't true, by the way. Pardon? No, but it's going to be Well, <laughs> even you said Scott, like there is some big issues in in our team. Like we do need to fix up because this, like, I I like yeah. I do like some of our players. I like um obviously Gusto. I like the He's actually a good centre back. I like even Cole Will. Like our midfield's obviously sorted. Like we're not going to replace any of our midfielders. Like you said, like we need a new left winger, another striker, and uh, definitely a left back. And uh, yeah, like. It just needs some tweaks, yeah. and obviously Pochettino needs to go as well, of course. Yeah. We just we just need to go out and do like get the right people in the right frame of mind. Like it, it has to it can't just be the new guy that get those positions. It can't just be anyone. It has to be people to understand not understand the club right, but like understand the dark arts of football, especially for like the defender. Understand mm. what it means to be in positions like this, as I said, of like either winning things or on the precipice, because then you know what it feels like to lose and if you know what it feels like to lose you never want to feel that again if anyone's lost anything in their time whether it be lost out on a job lost a game like whatever it is you know how it feels to lose you never want to feel that again yeah so it's like and that's why i was saying this earlier scott i hope that at least at least with this which is why i i have this feeling we could actually make the final of the fa cup because i'm hoping that with this result it's the spark up 
their asses that they need to see like hey we need to do this again and this time we cannot lose because i do not want to go back down steep down to those levels ever again look at what happened to man city when we beat them in the champions league final two years later they come back and win it immensely you can tell there was their first final and that's part of the reason why but they, also, they couldn't Marshall, perform that, that game yeah. Marshall, i'm glad you brought it up because i was thinking about this when i was talking about this earlier again it comes that cut that final even though they were the better team it came down to one player it came down to mr clutch himself in that in that game and that's the thing like and i spoke about earlier you look at the game when we played city yes we did a, a master class in terms of like um Two calls, obviously, bring the way he set us up a lot of the players. But look at look, some of the moments in that game. The Rudiger challenge on Foden, I think it was, when he's about to take a shot in the box. Shit like that. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Like, the fact we're focusing on Madaweke and Mudrik after that game is a joke, but anyway. They're, they're um, definitely not up to stuff, but go on. If, like, if we're basing it off that game, then, like... Um, but that's what I'm saying. Like, you need guys that understand like how to be in that position if that if that makes sense like and you need the guys that are going to come in clutch for you we don't have those players like our mm -hmm. clutch players quote unquote is sterling like our clutch player at the moment is Nkunku, and he did like not a lot today and unfortunately like i hate to say it but i told you so everyone that said when he was injured and we were missing him and once he comes back he's going to change everything he hasn't because he can't by himself because that's physically impossible to do unless your name is Hazard, Messi, Mbappe, Ronaldo, etc. Well, actually, now that you brought him up, Scott, and this was one of the things I wanted to bring up. Listen, in Kunku, since his return, has looked absolutely lackluster. Absolutely not up to snuff. And I'm trying to think in my head, what is going on? Why is this happening? And there's only two things that I can think. One, either he needs time to really mesh with the team because he's been out of the team for so long. Or Poch is literally making this player worse than what he actually yep. is. I disagree with you a bit. I think it is the Poch thing. Because I look at like, the game, the two games after he came back was the Wolves and the Crystal Palace game. The Wolves game, he comes in. And I think even though we still lost that game, um when he came back like immediately made an impact and he immediately looked one of the best players on the pitch and in the palace game again he looked one of the best players on the pitch and then he and then poch decides to change it up against luton and play him as a false like not a false line a target man but you can tell he's talented you can 100 percent tell he's talented and he's a good player from some of the games we've seen of him. like he looked so much better than a lot of the players we have in terms of like your Madrid, Madueke, Sterling, even Sterling, right? Like he looks so much better. The problem is, is he's he's not Hazard, he's not Messi, he's not these guys that are going to carry a team on their back with with everyone else playing like shit. He's not. You have to put him in a system that's going to help him, and in a way that's going to help him. And we haven't done that. The way that he's built this team around Gallagher. You should have done that when if Nkuku was in those positions Gallagher was in, and Kuku scored at least one of them. Like the, what what was the first stop? He took off Sterling. As much as as much as we can say Sterling was having a bad game, which fair enough. But Sterling's a guy where he will eventually get a chance and score. And he did that in the game, even though it was, you know, offside. What I would have done, even though I don't think Gallagher, to be fair, aside from the terrible missed chances. I don't think he had the worst of games, but no. if Pot had any balls about him, he would have taken off Gallagher and put in Kuku on uh, centrally as the 10. He didn't do that. In the second, I think late in the second half, or maybe it was an extra time, the first sub he made was bringing on uh, Mudrick for Jackson, when in reality, if you were going to make a sub, bring on Madueke first. Or you keep Jackson on, and you take off Gallagher and say bring on Mudrick and have Mudrick hug the left hand side and have Ink in centrally. Like he's making substitutions, but not really making the right ones. Not really trying to coin for the game. And it makes sense because again, with his comments and what he's done previously, 
Was it not against Nottingham Forest, the fourth game of the season, where you tried playing for the point? Like, this guy's, ah, with all disrespect to him, the guy's a bitch. <laughs> he has no, he has no <laughs> winners, he has no balls. <laughs> No, it's not even. Like, I'm, I don't even mean that as a joke or anything or a dig to him. Like, he is a bitch. It's not going miles, for him. Bro. Speaking facts. And it's I'm so fun. This game was there for the taking. This game, yeah. this game was like when people were talking about Liverpool's youngsters shine, they didn't really. Their players came on and they ran around a bit. They didn't do anything brilliant. What won them the game was a Van Dyke header from a set piece. Like. <laughs> Oh, it's but even then, it's it's what frustrates me so much is that at the end of the ninety minutes, we were we were putting on pressure onto Liverpool. We nearly scored multiple times. Why change the tactic at that point? Why sit back and try to play for penalties when penalties are so 50-50? It's not, it's almost not in your control, right? And on top of that, like, I, listen, maybe it's the commentary. Maybe this is what it was at the stadium. Anyone who was at, who was at the stadium today, please let me know. It seemed like that Liverpool crowd was a lot louder than, than our crowd. But regardless, why put the players who are inexperienced players, why put them through that, that, that situation where like, okay, where's the final? You got to kick a penalty now. When you I, had the stranglehold of the game, and you could have continued on. I think it goes back to what Scott was saying earlier about I don't think Pochettino yeah, rates this. I don't. I don't think Pochettino rates these substitutes, and because th those are the guys we would try, we would have relied on to get to get that winner, and he would rather leave it to a 50-50 chance than rely on their own abilities in open play. I think that's what it is. I don't know about anyone else. I agree. I just don't think he trusts them, and and that that's a problem. Like you can't, you can't have that. You you can't have your manager not trust some of the players that he has under him. Like that's that's a failure on all aspects. Like I mean, the manager, for fuck's sake, not, you, you can make the argument he doesn't even trust in Kunku, which is why he's not even starting him. I, I don't know if it's about trust. Like I, I need to know what's going on there, by the way, because yeah, he, like if, if he if he was fit to start today, he should have started. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I just don't think like with the injuries we have and, and what and Cuckoo's like dealing with this season with the injuries he's had, he's probably not risking it. And if he's not risking it, I, I actually understand that. I'm actually glad he's not risking it because Chris, it's it, a his, Carabao his, Cup his, final. Yeah, okay, but this like, is where people, you can risk it. No, 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 because like we said the same thing about Kante. Like, what look what we did to Kante in that final in Europa League final, like when he's injective needles, like. But and, you're uh, gonna win a trophy. You mean the final we won? Yeah, yeah. I, I, with Kante. Kante was amazing, obviously, but he's, on, he's basically... 2019 against Arsenal. Baku. Yeah, like, it's one-legged Kante, and, like, we, we basically guys, forced him to play. You guys, uh, guys, 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 you guys are uh, arguing. Poch did exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to try and win this on penalties, and Cuckoo is probably not fit, in, fit enough coming straight from an injury to play 120 minutes. Watch did exactly what he wanted to do. That, you know, that makes a lot more sense considering that. No, that yeah. Sterling substitution was always going to happen. Wait, wait, wait! But this is what I, this is kind of what I'm arguing. You could play in Kunku in that left wing, and then you, maybe he maybe he doesn't perform. Maybe maybe he doesn't change the outcome. Obviously, this is all hypotheticals. But surely, surely, I could see a game where after 90 minutes and Kunku doesn't doesn't do anything you bring on sterling and sterling looks so much better in those last few minutes where everyone's leggy and he's fresh versus today's game where he did absolutely fuck all the problem is though like if we're trying to go to penalties like prime said sterling's not a willing penalty taker he 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 bottled he, he basically sat out on the euros penalty yeah, shoot out he, he he was still on the pitch, I believe, in the Euros final, and yeah. he didn't. A lot of people, you know, he, yeah. he he let like Saka, a nineteen-year-old Saka, take those penalties, and not him. So he's not a willing taker, in my opinion. This is what I mean. What do you mean you can't risk him? You're gonna win a trophy. This is where you do take the risk. Yeah, and, and because it's all like, or nothing. Our next game is against. Our next game is against Leeds, and I don't know what the next game is after that, but I'm pretty sure it's not a it's, massive. It's game. Brentford, Wait, our next Brentford. game is actually Leeds. Brentford. Yeah, our next two games uh, are Leeds and Brentford, hey, man. Like, we're we're this is the game you risk him for. Yep, yep. 
Like, who cares about the league at this point? Like, we're we're fucked on the league. Okay, oh, I'll bring, I'll bring don't take the league. don't don't tri- don't take the risk on the league. I get that, but like a Carabao Cup final against a team you should be putting away because it's not it's their B team. Like, come on, dude. Again, Curry Pirates said this before. This is the same team that went toe to toe against a Man City that was actually, for the most part, fully fit. And you you tell you're telling me right now. You don't want to take a risk against a B-side Liverpool team with youth players that they're bringing on their substitutes in the later half were players that even their own fan base have not even heard of. Bro, he protected... The, but, he, but listen, we know this. He protected the point against Bournemouth. He's a pussy. It's insane to me. It's absolutely insane to right? me. Like, it, 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 it's, it's fine to get annoyed about it, but I'm personally... A bit puzzled as to why we're surprised. Right, like, you know, this is this is the guy's mindset at every club. It's, not, it's a surprise, but it's like you think like over and over. I keep falling for this this trap of like, okay, maybe Potts, you're showing some competence. You're showing something. Like, listen, you you got something against Man City. You got something against um uh oh my god, the, the team before Crystal Pass. Villa, Villa that were at at home, at home, mind you, at Villa Park. And I'm thinking, this, okay, Marshall, maybe something's is, cooking. But Marshall, this is what I said earlier. Like when it comes to the, your backs against the wall, and it's like it's the Ollie thing. I know was mm. it Prime or someone else joked about it, but it's the Ollie thing of like when yeah, your back's against the wall, when the pressure's not there, or it kind of is there, but in the sense mm. of you're a massive underdog, you step up. We saw it against Brighton in the cup, like when we like. We were going through a bad patch of form. We're coming up against Brighton, who literally just smacked us, like, what, a few games prior. And then we yeah. walked all over them. It's like the same thing. The moment it's... that there is no pressure on us, and we're the underdogs, and we have to go, and all we have to really do is just go out there and play our own game. The moment that happens, it's calm. We seem to perform fine. It's the moment that there's an ounce of pressure, and you have to step up, and it's the big stage. But Scott, and even that's that is not even that is not enough though. Even us being underdog and having no pressure, even that's not enough to win these games. Because he still does something to mess it up. Mm-hmm. It's it's so people that still defend this. Like I, I was that's listening to the terrorists and stuff, and Alan, um, Spurs fan, he's a good guy, but he came on and saying that like we Chelsea fans still need to give Poch time. Like, oh fuck off! Be, They're what? always gonna say what that because they want us to. What have we, That's like no, me what is, United, as a Chelsea fan telling United, like, hey, give all the time. Rivals wouldn't, rivals wouldn't accept. I don't get why Chelsea have to be the ones that <clears throat> accept this. Just because Arteta got forty billion chances just to have Arsenal in a title race doesn't mean we need to continuously accept failure just for it maybe to work out. Because if that's yeah. the case. Why didn't Spurs just accept Mourinho? He's got a proven track record. Just accept it and wait oh. until he gets it right. Why didn't Man oh, United God. just wait with Oli and wait until he gets it right? Why didn't Liverpool wait with Brendan Rodgers, who just got them in the title race, and wait until he gets it right? Until he gets it right? Why did mm-hmm. Chelsea have to be the one to accept mediocrity? I was going to no, say, get and, some teams, gone. He needs and some teams... And particularly after those comments, because I wasn't really angry after the game per se, but with those comments that came out, he should have been yeah. sacked straight away. Yep, he should be sacked from those comments. <clears throat> I'll be real though on the sacking thing of like I'm I'm kind of at the point where like I think the season's a write off anyway. Okay. We're almost yeah. at the stage where we were with Potter last season. I think we might even be there. I know it's it's about a month or so away from where Potter got sacked, but we might already be there. Where is there any point for this season? Yeah. Like for me, this season's a write off anyway. Like I don't think. People can say about the FA Cup, oh, we're not winning that. We're, I don't even think we're getting to the final personally. I don't think a manager changes that, by the way. Like, I, mm. I don't think if we got, even if we got Mourinho in tomorrow, I don't think that changes that. I don't think these players are good enough in against fully fit teams, which I think by the time the end of the season comes, your cities, your Liverpools, your Arsenal's, etc. will be. I don't think this team is good enough, like in those crucial clutch moments. Um, and then. I don't think the league, we've got a chance of finishing anything above seventh. And I'll be real, if if we're finishing seventh, as much as I'd like to get conference league for some of these young guys to play next season, I could care less. 
Let me just We're read this tweet here. Way. I, I, I think this... ride, you might as well ride this out in the summer, just so you don't have to fail at the interim thing uh, again. Oh, what, what is it that you said about how you were saying something like, if we get a new manager, it won't make a difference because some of these players are not good enough? Just in terms of like, it's the same thing I said earlier. I think as much as I like Poch deserves blame for this, for the game and for whatnot, in situations like this, because a league and a cup is different, cup final, in situations like this, it's like, I think a lot of the players we've got, because they've never been in this situation before in terms of being in cup finals and whatnot, they've got no idea what it's like to play there. And so it's like, they don't know what to be there. We It's like what you said earlier, and I said earlier about like the, that like the dark arts thing, the time wasting shit. They didn't do that because they don't know how to, because they never had but, to be here. They yeah, never had to do that. But that's why it's even, yeah, but that doesn't prove that they're good, not good enough. That makes it more, that just makes it more important that we get a manager that like has experience and has actually won things and that can actually coach them. That's fair. I just, as I said, I don't think it changes enough. I, I think it improves our chances of winning 100%. I don't think it changes it because I think at the I end think, of the day... I do think it does. I think, I think that, I think, play, like, at least some of the, the players for the most part, like, obviously I'm not talking about everyone, but I think, like, there are a lot of players, there are players here that are good enough and they've shown that they're good enough and that they can, if you give them, if they're given a chance with an actual coach, that they can show that they can compete and, and be on the stage. Or even like well, I said little... over and over again, if they're given direction, because listen, as much as as much as like and Scott, I think you might even agree with me. As much as Enzo today was not up to scruff, how much do you put that on the fact that maybe Pochettino was telling him, "I need you to sit back," or putting him in the wrong position, giving him wrong instruction? Potentially, but like the thing for me is I don't put Enzo's performance today just on Poch because it's not because he there's no aspect of his game today that was good and you can't put that all on Poch. Defensively, he was garbage. On the ball, he was garbage, which is what we associate Enzo with. Like, yeah, and it's it's moments like these, right? Where even we've seen it before, and I know it's a different level of player, but this is what I mean in terms of like not good enough. Where go and look at that dirt cup. <laughs> yeah, this guy's always on cue, man. <laughs> On um, cue, which ends we summoned him. Go ahead, yeah. Go look at the Champions League final in 2012. No one's going to tell me that Di Matteo is some all righteous god when it comes to motivating these players. No, but those players knew how to get up for that moment and the occasion. They knew how to get up for that moment and the occasion. That's oh, what that's I mean. Like, even if it's not though, but that's why that's why I talk about these players in terms of no, these players are good enough. No, but Scott, it is. The, the 2012 Champions League final, like Drogba, Lampard, Terry, they were all in their early 30s. They were old men. This is That was their last chance of winning something big. Like, okay, these, okay, young play, I, I these, young players are, these young players are... I'm not excusing how Enzo played, by the way, for example. But these young players, it's even more important why they need a proper coach that's been there and done it and can actually guide them. We... People, People love to talk about, you know, Liverpool, their youngsters won them the game. Why is it these young kids are coming off the bench in an FA Cup final or Calvary Cup final where the game's still in the balance at 0-0 and they're coming in relaxed and calm and being able to play their game? Surely that's the manager because I don't believe those young kids are world beaters or generational. They're, to me, they're mm. average. They don't, look, they don't look that good. They're average. I'm going to be honest. But they came on calm freedom being allowed to play their simple game what, what what we don't have that why why is it our and we and people are meant to say enzo is like this amazing talent and caicedo and etc why is it our best players on talent are looking like bozos the majority of the time clearly that has to go on the manager so if we had a better if we had sorry today for example we don't lose this final but so, yeah, but Sorry's a good example. And if we want to use it, but Sorry's not an like I wouldn't say Sorry's an elite in like man manager or in terms of like mentality. But again, you look at that Europa League final we won, and I understand there's a bit of an age gap, and this is kind of what I'm talking about. I was talking about earlier of like in that final, I no one before the game that final thought we were winning four one, thought we were destroying Arsenal like that. 
But yeah. that team and those players, and obviously there's a couple of outliers in terms of like Hazard and whatnot, but that team and those players got up for that final more than anyone expected. And that's what I mean. I'm like, even if the manager is failing you like he did today, I look at like someone like an Enzo and I look at some of the others like Chilwell and Sterling, especially in the experienced guys, like say, for example, I'd say today, De Sassi stepped up. De Sassi played that like it was a final today. Same with Cole. I think he played that like it was a final. All right, I'll shake you, but he, he ended up being like really good towards the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they played it like it was a final. I expect and we still lost. And I can say, fair enough, I don't really have anything to get at you. That's my point. It's like, even if the manager fails you, I need to see you get up for that final regardless. And I, for a lot of the players on the pitch today, Enzo, Sterling, Chilwell, even Palmer to an extent, I'm not seeing that. And that's what I mean. That's what I say about I these players. Like, I get ability what you're saying. Wise, what? In terms of actual football ability, I can't fault a lot of these players. When I say not good enough, I mean in terms of mentally, these players aren't good enough. Yeah, but I don't... Uh, I can't... This is weird because I usually don't like defend young players, but like I don't, I kind of hear what you're saying. But like when we're, when we're using the Sari example and you're using that final, that's not the example I mean. I mean of how Sari was able to develop. Look at how he was able to handle. Uh, everyone talks about Callum Hudson Odoi and and Ruben Loftus Cheek and how he was able to ha just like Jimmy trying to blame everything on the manager. Hey, Enoch, relax, go suck your mom. Anyway. Um, how he was able to handle the likes of Callum Hudson and Boy and uh, Ruben Loftus Sheik, those young players, and how he was able to develop them. That's the sort of thing I'm talking about because a lot of our squad is young players that are meant to be talents and they need to be developed. You're talking about our as our experienced players stepping up. Well, we know like Sterling's not good enough. We know Gallagher's not good enough. We know Chilwell's not good enough. So like, I, my focus isn't going to be on them helping us bail us out. My focus is on these young players who have shown the season, they have been our shining uh, lights. I need them to be coached and developed. I can't keep hoping on and wishing on Gal uh, uh, Chilwell to have a great game when I know that's just not going to happen. I'm, I'm not going to keep talking on that. I'm going to look at, like, and Enzo Fine wasn't the best today, but that's on the manager. The manager either should have had the balls to take him off or should have spoken to him at, during a drinks break within what 30 minutes or so and told him to like you know put a put a rocket up his ass and tell him to kick into gear that's on the again everything stems back to the manager but, but prime I, I i'll i agree with you to a certain extent but with the enzo situation that you just mentioned yes any other mm -hmm. day if we had the substitute for him i would have taken off enzo because he was having a shit game today the only thing we could have done potentially is um, move Gallagher back, mm. and then play and play Kuzma in the ten. Which, That's the only which alternative. See, which we but then, saw, but, but, but this is what I mean. Also, season, like, I, yeah, yes, but this is the other thing too that I wanted to mention. It's also not entirely on Poch because depending on what happened in that back room, in the back room on the transfer plan, whatever the fuck the idea was, if we had an Andre Santos on that bench. He plays and comes on for Enzo, but we don't have it. Whose fault is that? Is that Potch or is that the board? I disagree. What do you I, disagree? Don't think Poch, I don't think Poch writes him. Poch, Poch will not have used Santos. Poch yeah. Poch yeah. Santos. He might not. I, I, don't, I wouldn't know for sure. Like, that's why and look, and the thing is, you're talking Enzo. about if if it, it's on, if, if Enzo having such a bad game, you take him off, like, because we saw in the first half of the season for like a couple a few months I was taking off enzo after like 60 minutes and putting gallagher deeper so you either do that which you've shown you've done so many times this season or you speak to enzo whether it's during the drinks break or it's at half time and you tell him to kick him and kaiseido by the way so i'm not letting kaiseido get away with it too you tell both of them to kick into gear and this is a final they need to wake up because that's again on the manager. Managers, if the players are having a bad half or whatever, it's up to the manager to get them to wake up or you take them off. It's one of the two and Posh didn't do either. So as much as we go at the player, we can also go at the manager because he's the leader. If we're going to talk about these players being young and not knowing any better, then that's even more important And the manager has to be someone who's a leader and who's in charge. Like, what, what are we doing? Everything I can bring 
people say I'm just blaming the manager, I'm just blaming the poch. Well, if or if all the lead, if all the roads lead back home, what do you want me to do? Yes, yeah, I, I will do say think Poch me, really, yeah. is an idiot, yes. I I will say as well, like I do agree with you, and I mentioned this earlier. When it comes to these young players, and this is why I do agree with you about Sorry and with other managers, and we saw it with Klopp today. Sorry would empower some of these young players, and it looks like Poch doesn't do that. And when you have a team full of young players, that is a huge issue. And honestly, this is where I look at the the fucking owners and the sporting directors. Like, if this is a guy who doesn't empower young players, and he never has, by the way. People want to say about, like, he plays young players. He's never developed young players, really. Go and look at the, the guys he's played, the young players that have played at certain clubs. At PSG, it was the likes of Hakimi, who was arguably, when he joined, one of the best right-backs in the world at the time. Like, then it was Mbappe and these men. Um, and at Tottenham, it was Kane, who was already starting for, uh, like, the season before under Tim Sherwood. And if the other choice was, like, Adebayor or sort of Wash Soldado. So, like, this idea he develops young players, of course. But anyway, like that, that's the problems we've had this whole season. And it's not worked. He will be gone. It's a when, not an if. It's just when that when is. Um, and like I said, this summer is the most important summer in these men's lives. You can't fuck it up again. Like, three strikes and you're out. No way. Absolutely like no, no one's way. gonna trust you again. Yeah, you can't fuck it up again. You cannot fuck up another uh, manager appointment, and you can't fuck up another window in terms of not getting that elite level talent. I thought what they did really well in the summer with getting who they got in, like in terms of the players, but unfortunately, it's not enough because there are still holes in this team. By the way, that think, aren't uh, all your fault, but some of them are your fault. I was, I was gonna say, do you think way, they have to get rid of the sport? Okay, go on, Marsha. Well, well, we'll get to that, Chris. I, I think I know where your question's yeah. going. Uh, but yeah, by the yeah. way, nearly near about 230 of you guys are watching. If you are liking the content, please smash that like button because it does support the channel. And I would appreciate it if you are new here to subscribe because we are on our way to 3K and you guys can help us achieve that goal by smashing that subscribe button and smashing that like button as well. But um, I hate to do this to you guys. And this goes into the question of um, we need to talk about our set pieces. Because another okay. goal conceded through set pieces once again. And we go through the goal. Now, my question is for you guys. Is this goal more on the Sassi losing Virgil van Dijk or Mudrik not being aggressive Mudrick. enough on the header? Uh, I, I, thought, I was going to say, like... Uh do you think Mudrik? Because I thought Tassasi should have, like, you know, pushed him a bit back. You know, you can be a bit rough in corners and, like, hold him a bit back and... I thought it was the Sassi because I wasn't too sure when I watched it live. And then, I, yeah, I didn't look properly. Yeah, it was the Sassi, wasn't it? Yeah, I, I think I blame the Sassi now because I, I don't, I don't expect Mudrik to really like you know outhead a, a Van Dyke like it's Van Dyke. You need your big man like um, the Sassi to outstrength him or you know try to bully him or put him off or something. The Sassi's the guy to do it. But that's the only thing I thought maybe a bit bad from the Sassi. But yeah, like. I, I don't really blame Mudrik for that too much for me. No, you disagree. Yes. To me, that's all on Mudrik. Um, the like you, the just the way um, the way you defend that is pathetic. Um, number one, like what? Because Peter mentioned this actually in the Cyclone Two group chat. Why are you trying to do a flat jump against the guy with the biggest leap on the pitch? who's we've already seen can score a header you know he's coming as well like you can see everything you're in space you're not marking anyone like his he his attempt at defending there is pathetic like it's for me that's all on madrid like that's all on madrid you're good like with the sassy right you're gonna lose your man sometimes at a, a corner that happens but then your hope is mm -hmm. that you know madrid because he's in space he can see the whole situation he can see everything that's going around him <clears throat> excuse me like he can you know he can defend it properly, but no. Do we have a third opinion? <laughs> um, I, I don't really. I think it's a, it's a bit of both. Like, 
I can't put it on. <laughs> I, I, can't, I can't put it solely on one person. But at the end of the day, I'm just, I'm just sick of these. These set pieces feel like penalties every time we concede them. <clears throat> there's, there's, there's always like a high percentage threat that it's going to go in, even when we, even when we come up against a team that isn't like particularly known for it. It's just we'll always leave a space somehow, or someone will always lose their man. You've got you've got players that are marking the wrong person in terms of you want your tall guys probably marking your tall guys and and vice versa. But we have our shorter guys marking the tall guys. It, it's it's just something's got to give because it happens every game. It's happened all season, and we're not gonna if we are gonna keep pots, which I doubt by now. But if we are gonna keep them beyond this season, we are not gonna improve unless unless that aspect changes. I would say also, I think today, I don't even think we even set up and uh, we even defend set pieces in a way where it's like, oh, you mark this guy and you mark this guy. This to me, and this game in general, I think to me shows that we're very, very much set up to just zonal mark um, in set pieces. Which it feels like a bit of both. I it's think. a mix. That especially like this, this corner, because if you notice, like, because obviously you've got Desassi and I think you had Colwell and a couple of others, because I think you can see Kaiseido there at the back marking someone. So you'll have about four or five players mm -hmm. marking someone and then the rest of the four or five players do zonal marking on the edge. Because if you notice as well, when Mudrik loses the header, there's also like Nkunku's next to him. So like, I think there's like, so hot, you have half the players like, um, yeah, because that's Nkunku there next to him. It's like on the box um so yes yeah, so like you have half it's like a half and half thing yeah i, I mean the works. reason i say half is because even today like i saw multiple times where you had chill chill well on van dyke you had um um well actually chill was one that st sticks out to me the most but it's just <sighs> it's really weird and i, I don't know why I don't know why, but it seems like this has been a problem despite multiple different changes of manager and set piece staff. This, this seems like a problem we've been having for years because I remember years back, I've seen Aspilicueta marking Thomas Socek. I've seen Kante. I've seen Kante marking Virgil van Dijk. Like, what? Whose idea is that? It's been happening for years and I don't understand the continuity yeah, of that. The we had. We had Ga Gallagher marking a, a girl, right? When we were uh, up against Man City. That, oh, I was thinking uh, Caicedo marking Holland. That, that too, yeah. It's just ridiculous. I, it's, it's strange how we have such a continuity in this in this department, yet um, yet the managers and the coaching staff have changed so much. Yet we always seem to be backwards on our set pieces. Like It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's... Um... Man, I don't even know. I mean, I could, guess I can bring up this tweet because it it, mm, it just ruffles me wow. up in the wrong wrong ways. Here we go. We are bold, Josh. Um, Gary Neville. I mean, yeah, apparently. Um, and you know what? I can't even deny it. Uh, Gary Neville on Caicedo. At Brighton, you thought that he was actually quite good on the ball, but you watch him here at Chelsea. Absolutely shocking at times in possession. This guy, man. I mean, I I can't deny what he's saying. The the billion billion pound bottle jobs. But for fuck's sake, man. Like even even today, I, I thought I said it was fine. <sighs> you know, I'm at a, I'm at a loss for words, quite frankly. Like I don't really know what else to say other than what's been said, really. It's just so frustrating to be going through this. And I know that these managers or these owners are going to keep Poch in the job until at least the summer. But God, if I see him in the club next season, I'm going to lose my shit. Yeah, go I'm down. Go down to London. I'm not watching it. For me. <laughs> if we if we keep Poch next season, uh, I don't know what to expect. Like, but more misery and, and all sorts. We, it, I don't know if it costs even much to get rid of Poch since he's on only a two-year contract. So it's not going to be like a, that expensive to get rid no, of. No, it shouldn't be much. No, no. so can't lost this at that point. Like you know, move on to the next manager. It has to be that way because like 
he's he's not going to get the best out of our team. He he just won't. this is this is the strange thing because this is the whole point. Like you said, the two-year contract. The whole point of that was in order for in order for us to sever ties more easily without paying a lot. Yeah, see, see where. Yeah, we haven't done it is. despite more, numerous occasions this season where it was time to pull the plug, including before this final. I'm not even saying he should have been sacked for this final. No, he should have been sacked before this final. He didn't deserve it. United, United, as early as that. Yeah, you. exactly. But. Man, I don't, I don't know. Chris, do you have something to say? And I, I'm my thinking, intellectual I, I, friend. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm thinking, man, I shouldn't even talk on fishing and just watch some fishing or something over just Chelsea or something. This is this season. <laughs> I, I was just debating what what sports uh... should I watch or something because like Chelsea, man, like it, it, this whole season is just after tonight. Like obviously, like you know, I had this to look forward to. Like I don't normally care for Carabao Cups, but. You know, the last one we actually played in the final, I think, was uh, against City, right? Uh, where we lost. Um, but yeah, like it's no, we it's two years ago it's local. Oh yeah, well, I was thinking we're the, the Lukaku it. offside. Yeah, 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 we just keep losing. We just keep losing these finals. We do six, actually. six in a row. That's what it is. <laughs> like, yeah, but yeah, like, I don't, I don't really care for Cowboy Cups normally, but this is the only thing I was actually looking forward to because, like, we're, you say we'll get to the final. I, I don't think we're gonna get to the final now. Like, I think. This team now, they're, they're, they see where they are on the table. They see how they... We just lost to a team, what, like you said, is a B team. It's a, it's a slash, like, you know, youth team. It's... um, we, we If we can't beat that, then what hope do we have to beat, like, even a City in the FA Cup, you know, or... Or, you know, um, even a Man United, man. A Man United go, would knock us out in the FA Cup if we... Well, that, that's them. the thing. It's luck of the draw at this point. We beat... If we beat Leeds, then we have to see who we get next. I don't think we're going to beat Leeds. I, I, I don't. No, but, even if, but even if we did, we don't know who we're playing next. And, yeah, and that yeah, depends yeah. on the results that come up as well. Like, it's just luck of the draw, as usual in the cuts. I, I just want to reset the season again, but, like, with a different manager, you know, just reset for a different manager, because I, I, I know, like, Poch isn't, like, the full blame of this team, because I think, you know, we do need improvements in this team still, but Poch is, like, we're below, like, where we should be expected, you know. I didn't expect to be, like, Fighting for tenth, like you know, below Wolves, below uh, Brighton, below West Ham, even you know, below all these teams, like it's just, it's just shocking to see. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's depressing, man. Question for you guys: This is gonna seem like a really dumb question. Probably. Do you guys think? <sighs> Do you guys think that this result reflects what's going to happen for the rest of the season? Like, what I mean by that is that, do you think that despite this result, Poch probably started getting a tune out of these guys, figuring out what positions to play them and how, how to play them and so on and so forth? Because prior to this game, we were getting results and we were seeing improvements on the pitch football-wise. Do you think Poch maybe has a better second half of the season no. the problem is outside of aston villa we haven't beaten anyone of any real significance and we can celebrate well, man city was a proper was a that good, was a draw that wasn't a win it was a draw we almost won though but it was a draw and we saw good football but the thing is like with even with the man city thing that isn't that isn't a result that's off theme for us this season because the whole thing about this season is that we've been able to turn up and have good performances against against the quote-unquote big teams but it's your Brentford, it's your Nottingham Forests, it's your, um, you know, your Lutons where you struggle, where you either struggle and win by the skin of your teeth or you struggle and mm -hmm. lose embarrassingly. So I, I don't think the City thing is off off theme at all. I think that's, you know, we literally did this earlier in the season. We beat, we drew to City 4-4. It, it was the same sort of thing. We're, we're, beat, we're, we're having good performances against the big guys, but then... You know the, these these quote unquote little teams. You know that's where we seem to get a bit complacent in in a sense. Uh, Prime Scott, what do you guys think? What was your question? What was the question again? I, I can't remember. <laughs> Sorry, man. my question was. It's all right. It's all right. Um, my question was, do you guys think that despite this result? that maybe Poch has started to turn things around in terms of finding his best starting 11 and playing better football. No. 
No. <laughs> I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I don't trust them. This guy doesn't seem to learn when we... Oh, sorry, Scott, you're talking. No, it's cool. I was just going to say, like, it's not even just about trust. Like, bring up Joel's comment and you'll understand my exact viewpoint on it. Like, we, we've said this the entire season. Like, we had a moment in earlier on in the season where we knew our best 11 and we knew how they should play and he changed it to the detriment of the team. And then we saw that, you know, he changed a few things and we had a, a period of good form, like three or four games, wherever it was. It was going well. And he changed it. Like, it, it just means nothing, man. Like, it's it's the boy who cried wolf. Like, Marshall, we literally said this against dumb. Aston Villa when we won 3-0 in the cup. We literally said this against Middlesbrough. When we won five one, we literally said this against them um, uh, when we played Spurs and we beat them. Because remember, the whole thing about Spurs was well, we put in the performance against Arsenal and City. We said this against Arsenal, it was then against Man United or not Man United against Man City. Like, I'm done with this giving him credit for the one off game. No, go our next win our next ten games or five games. Win our next five oh. games. <laughs> I just want four wins in a row. I haven't even gotten that this season. I just want one. I just want a convincing. Actually, no, no. Actually, fair. Actually, to be I honest, I take it back. Cool. We haven't hit three wins in a row in the league at all this season. I thought we did. No. No, we hit no. three, oh. three wins in a row in terms of games uh, like FA Cup, Carabao, but not in the league. A, that's that's low. And and. We actually went through an easy patch of form where we could have done it, yeah. and we bottled it then too. Remember the easiest start to the season st statistically. We, we 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 did actually have the easiest start. God damn it! <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> like that's just like ah. <laughs> uh, who who would have yeah. thought we'd have been here again, man? Like we we was literally like tenth like last season. Now we're tenth again. Who would have thought that? Now I'd be sitting here saying. I miss Grand Potter. I wish I had Grand Potter right now. I'm just trying to think. I guarantee um... you. I guarantee you. Even though that guy was spineless, he had some type of football. Like there was a system in place with bad players. Now there's pretty decent players, inexperienced, whatever. Call them what you want. But man, I saw Enzo play so much better last season than this season. Better with Frank Lampard than Pochettino. Just think that. I, I, I was going to mention Lampard. I said, wait, what, what would happen if Lampard actually t took control of the season? Would we actually be like 10? Because I think Lampard was actually not even that bad when, uh, you know, and before Tuchel, of course. We was like 8 or something. Mm, no. We're poor. I know we're poor. Defensively as well. got to get some marshmallows, man. But I felt like we were getting a bit more results under Lampard. Uh, at Point Navy, I'm not too sure. I mean, so bad, uh, so. no, Lampard was. We were losing, losing, and losing. <laughs> Lampard, it was bad. It was bad. But listen, uh, I, I hate to be. Again, eh? I, because here's the thing too. I, I have to phrase this because maybe people don't see it this way, and maybe you guys agree as well. I'm sure you guys actually agree. It's not like I'm sitting here. And I want Pochettino to lose. I don't like Poch. I never wanted him as my manager. Like I said over and over again in previous streams, I settled for this guy. And he, he talked a big talk and I was like, okay. Sold me a dream in preseason. And now I'm here stand, looking at my old self being like, hey, you should have just stuck to your gut. But I don't want Poch to fail. I don't. I'm tired of fucking losing. I'm tired of being a ten. Uh, this... I'm tired of being called a billion dollar, a, a billion pound bottle job FC project. I don't want to be that. I'm tired of having to defend Enzo and Caicedo constantly because I know these players are fucking class. Now that this is that, to succeed. That that narrative is like anyone that runs that narrative is ridiculous, and I'm not. I'm not just talking about Chelsea fans because I know there's a whole thing in the United fan base as well with Ten Hag where. There's been a thing with Goldbridge where Goldbridge is basically accused the Ten Hag out as wanting Man United to lose. Like it's it's just it's it's just ridiculous. Like we we want Poch out because we don't trust him to improve the situation. That's not us wanting him to lose. I, th I think that's a pretty simple concept. I don't know about you guys. Like 
And who knows? You know what? Like I, I said this. I said this last time. I have. I have confidence, and you, you guys, some of you guys in chat are gonna think I'm deluded, and maybe some of you in the panel. I have confidence that eventually, this ownership is going to get it right. We are going to see these players pick it up and become the not all of them, most of them I would think, become the players are supposed to become. I think this team is going to be really good. But even at this point in the season, at this point in their in the project, in the 10 year project, whatever you want to call it, even at this point, I would expect something much better than this. Again, uh, I, I don't want to sound conceited. I don't want to sound like a spoiled Chelsea fan, but this team should I stand with what I said in the beginning of the season. This team should be good enough to be in top eight. There's no reason we should stay in 10th place. <laughs> top eight. The only question I'll ask, though, is how, how many more mistakes I, before they get it right? And that's what I mean. Like, I, I can't I can't fathom a world where for 10 years straight, they get it wrong over and over again. You can't be that incompetent. You can't own two of the best franchises in sports and get it wrong this badly for 10 years straight. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way. No one is that bad at wait, their wait, job. Wait, wait. No one told. Wait, no. I thought the other franchise he owns is doing well. They are. That's why I said they're top franchises in the world: LA Dodgers and the Lakers. Yeah. I. Yeah, those teams are right. Like, I, I understand it's a different sport, but surely success is somewhere in there. The vision for success is in there. The vision for what it's like to win trophies, the vision for what it's like to be at the top of the game is in there. Surely they have to get it right eventually. So, th But again, I, I stand with what I'm saying before. Even if this is going to take time, I was willing to see this project out as long as we were maintaining some standard of good performances. We are not maintaining that standard, and that's where I get fucking frustrated, and that's where I lose my head because... We are better than 10th place. We are better than 11th place. We are better than losing an FA, uh, a Carabao Cup final to a Liverpool B team. Um, I think, I think while I'm encouraged by this ownership, um, there is one thing, and it's I, I, I look at the way they run the women's team, and granted, it's a different situation because that doesn't need a rebuild. The men's team did need a rebuild when they got here, but the women's team shows me that they, they do have an ability to run um to, to to run a project or something at a at a high level once it's at the winning stage because they've i believe what's it they've gotten the uh the leon women's manager in order to replace they, got they haven't definitely got her. they haven't definitely got her, but they've offered her a contract yeah so they, they they've clearly got aspirations in that regard so once they get to a point where they're ready to win then there is an ability there but the problem is we have they didn't need a rebuild the women's team, but the men's team they have they have been tasked based on the the years of mismanagement under Roman. They had to rebuild it, and the rebuild part is where they're no, getting we, it wrong because we can't get to that stage with these mistakes. What, so what, when they get there, we'll be fine, I think. But it's getting there that right now it's looking like a very long way away. They, but they got, go on. No, go ahead, Chris. I, I was going to say like. The, like next year is like where we see if they can actually start getting it right. Like they have to start getting it right, like massively next season. But obviously sacking a manager, I think getting rid of the manager, obviously hiring a manager what suits our team, hopefully, and getting rid of our board, I think as well. Like you know, like the directors and all that. Like you know, they're not doing it though, Chris. They're hiring people to work under those directors. Yeah, exactly. And exactly. and they've literally just hired. It's one of Win Stanley's former colleagues. Obviously, Win Stanley and all these have just had a hell of a season, obviously, you know, with the management and all that. Mm -hmm. Like, they're still in charge who to hire as a manager, right? And stuff like that, right? Like, well, that, well, the way the process was a year ago was that they were they were heading up the interview process and they, yeah. they provided the final shortlist. They provided the final shortlist to uh, Burley and Negbali. So, um, mm. like, they, they were the ones that made that list with company and... and um, Postacoglu and Poch, and yeah, so it's, it's it's really the interviewing process. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think what, I think where listen, 
I... Gwen Stanley and Lauren Stewart. I think the players we have in our team, Bari Mudrik, Ugu Chugu is up in the air. And who else? I, I don't know. I, I think really those. Outside of those two, I think we did recruit really well. I think the players that we have are very good and they're potentially going to be top players. What vexes me is why was there no combination of let's bring in some top class players or keep some because I tell you right now, God damn it. I wish we had kept Jorginho mm -hmm. till this day. To this day, I I mourn the fact that we lost Jorginho when we did. Even giving him like a two year or whatever, like extending a contract just a little bit, because we could have used a player like him and the leadership that he brought to the team for just a little longer, just to transition these players through, have that experience, have that availability, by the way, which Jorginho, unlike Lavia, unlike Ugu Chuku, unlike I'll, I'll even throw this in there. Ch Chukomeka, who are not available all the time. Georgina was always available, which is one of the best things about him. Just to just to have hold off that transition a little bit. Have I a little agree. Bit of a, a, mix, a mix and match of some experience. Not too much. Maybe one or two experience heads, right? Just to... In the, in a case like today, this game, where it's, it's a final, you have a lot of youth players. Those players, and we saw it with Caldwell in the beginning... They're going to be nervous. If it was any other team, if it was Liverpool's A team, oh my God, they would have eaten us, eaten us apart, torn us apart. Pause. But it, it, it just, I don't know. I don't know. That's why I'm like so 50 50 with the board because there should have been a, a little bit of a mix. And is it on the board or were they directed? To do this, Oliver, what were you going to say? I'm sorry. Well, well, well on, on that last question there, the reports suggest that it would have been an instruction from Top Brass, so this would have been like a directive from Meg Barley. Um, but on the on the Jorginho thing, I I agree. Like outside of the whole, he's an Arsenal player thing. I'm I'm glad he's getting his plaudits now because he is a good player. I just don't want to know what that what this player would have looked like playing under Poch. That sounds disgusting. I, I, imagine. Well, Look! Look at what Caicedo has to do for this team because Enzo's like being told to bomb forward, and you've got Silva who is making everyone cover a bit more ground. Imagine Jorginho in that. Like, it's not his fault because he's got his limits, but that's what it would look like in Potts' system, and it would have been it would be dreadful. The only thing it would possibly provide is some experience on the training ground and on on the bench. Yeah. Any uh any other final thoughts, ladies and gents, for the game? Um, I'm lucky no. guys, you, you gave you <sighs> listen. The boys gave everything. Yeah, the boys <laughs> gave everything. At, the, at this point, mm -hmm. as much as Poch needs to be executed, um, certain people on the board need to be standing right behind Jesus them. Jesus Christ! Like, yeah, I don't know who's. I don't know who's. I'm not going to say everyone, but I don't know who's responsible for bringing in. The managers we've had over the last like was a year or so 18 months but like even the decision making like are you like I, i'm not like one of these two cool fanboys but when they decided to sack him is very suspect and then when you decided to sack Pot, uh, potter is suspect and now when you're deciding to sack Pochettino, so that's three that's three on the bounce Three strikes, you're out. You've got to go. I kind of feel the same way at this point, to be honest. Like, I again, I want this ownership to succeed. Why? Not because I'm American. Not because I have an agenda and I want to be right. It's because I want yeah. Chelsea to do well. I am an American, but I'm not saying that's the reason. I 
I, 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 I want this club to succeed. I want this project to work. I want this club to be better than the Roman era. I want that. That's why I want this to work out so badly. But I got to call it like it is. And I'm willing to give it till next season. If next season we don't see the rectification of the mistakes made over and over by this ownership. If you don't rectify the board you made. If you don't rectify the uh, uh, appointment you make in the manager. If you don't rectify, rectify the recruitment. I will have lost faith. I'm sorry. I will have lost. I already barely have faith as it is. To be frank, I already barely have faith as it is because I, I have been so diminished to to this point because of Poch, because of the recruitment that I've seen, because of the lack of decisions being made from the higher ups. But listen, this summer, this summer, there are very few managers I wouldn't take over Poch. There are plenty to pick up, pick from that are much better than Poch. Deserby. Xabi Alonso. I listen, I'm not saying all these are realis realistic, but they're out there. Tuchel. Flick. They're Amarim. Well, actually, actually, Amarim is not an option anymore. But regardless, there well, are options out team. there. Isn't he already tied to Brighton? No. No. He's been linked to Liverpool as well. But he's, he, these are just links at the moment. That's the thing. But oh, I thought he, he was already he, officially going to be... Okay. Even, with the, even with the Brighton thing, that, that all hinges on what happens with the Zerbi, right? Yeah. Already he's already announced he was leaving at the end of the season. Here's right? what I don't want. Did this he? Whole thing of like, Pretty sure. This no. whole thing Maybe that no. we do of this guy's better than the other, so just get anyone. I this is what we um this is what we did when we were saying, oh, just get rid of Potter, anyone's better than him, and look at what we were left with. We're, le we're left with anyone. And anyone's the thing not is good. too no oh. uh, I, I, I almost want to... Um, what's his name? Bruno. Prime, I, 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 I almost... Like, go ahead, Brian, go ahead. But like my point being, I get it, there's a whole short list of names and stuff. But like yeah. the same way the short list that they were looking at and they picked Pop, uh, um, Poch, let's look into that short list. Luis Enrique um, has won trophies, experienced, he's not going to deal with this bullshit of young players and projects. So... He shouldn't even be on that short list in the first place. Now, mm -hmm. would have been the perfect choice to lead his project. Um, when Stanley, not with Stanley, Lawrence Stewart, who's the guy that left? Oh, Christopher Vivelle. Vivelle, Vivelle oh, yeah. yes, Vivelle yeah. wanted him. Um, now, Guzman rejected the project. I would love to know why. I would love to know why he said no to coming here. Um, even though I know we're a mess, so I can probably guess, but. I would love to know his thoughts on why he didn't choose to come. Uh, then there's Pochettino. Then there's And Postacoglu. And there is um, uh, Company. the other the, the big head guy. Company. Company. All those names don't make sense. Stylistically, mentality wise, what they're willing and will not put up with. None of those names should be on a short list together. Mm. That doesn't make sense. Now, you look at the managers that are left now or will be available in the summer. Uh, what you said, mm -hmm. the Zerbi, Chabi Alonso, Flick, Amarim, the guy at Porto, uh, Conte Sal. Those, yep. These are varying different managers in terms of like what they are achieving. They all they're all quite young and up and coming. Um, they all play different play styles. Pick the right manager. It's not just about getting anyone in and you bring in someone and they also fail. Pick the right guy for this project and once you pick the right guy give him the players and the profiles that he actually wants let's do this properly we're doing this a third time do this properly this time but prime Please. don't you don't you think like i i agree with you by the way i agree with you 100 percent Unfortunately, I don't think we have the owners that can, or even the directors, to be honest, that can correctly identify the right manager. But don't you think even any of these managers, even if they're not the right manager, don't you think they're competent enough to work with what they have? To have some type oh. of tactic, to have some type of system. Like, okay, listen, these aren't my players, but I'm going to get a tune out of it. Oh, they will be. But we, we you know, that eventually has a ceiling. 
Like, yeah. like if I can use Tuchel as the example, fine, he overperformed in terms of winning the Champions League or whatever and the Club World Cup and all of that. But we saw with him in the league, like eventually there's only so much you can really do when you don't improve, when you cannot improve on your squad. There's only so much you can do when Reese James and Chilwell get injured and you have to use Malang Sar, um, Marcus Alonso, uh, Kennedy, Aspilicueta, Kennedy. Pulisic, and so on. And that. Yeah, there's only so much you can do. There's only so much you can do when Kante yeah. gets injured and Jorginho has to play every single game. There's only so much you can do when Christensen and Rudiger are losing down their contracts, running down their contracts, and we can't improve on our defence. There's only so much you can do when you're playing at 30, at that point, 36, 37-year-old every single week. There's only so much you can do. And you cannot improve on the poor squad. So if a new manager comes in, there's only so much a new manager will be able to get. Obviously, we won't be 10th. We'll be much higher. We'll be, like, say, 6th or whatever. But there's how much can we really push into, say, a top four or turn into title challengers or title winners if the squad doesn't really get improved on that much? Well, we put we put ourselves hang on, Marshall, we, we put ourselves in a difficult position as well because we spent a lot of money on some of these players. So we yeah. need to bring in a manager with the idea of keeping these players in and not improving on them in the future <clears> because you know these are major investments that are meant to carry us into the, you know for the next decade. But here's the thing, though. I I don't know what the right answer is, but let me feed a hypothetical to you. What if we bring in a manager that gets results? I understand that maybe if it's not the right manager for the project, it, the 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 football isn't going to last, right? Eventually, it will come back down. It's covering the cracks again. But I would argue that if we do that for two seasons, let's say, where we get these players playing in Europe, we're in, competing in top four, but we're not in the football goes up and down. It's yo-yo football. By the time the right project manager comes in, these players have already gained some type of experience. These players have already, I guess, even identified what type of style that they like to play in, what their strengths are and all this and that. Don't you think you could build a project with that? Or does it have to be from scratch like we are right now? Um, no, because what you're saying, just get like win now managers. Get managers that can cover the cracks right now. Yeah. And then in two years time, when we've we know there's efficiencies in the club at least these players have some experience at least these players have found themselves as as um in the game have found themselves in terms of what type of players they are and so on and so forth wouldn't you say that you can then build a a much more not then you could start picking away and building a project like okay you know what we've given this player time he's not fit for the mold let's sell him off or this player he's developed you into can't. a decent player i don't well, know a win a win now manager like a who so like a conte or a Mourinho, he's not going to accept yeah he's, he's not going to because these young players need time to develop Mourinho is not going to accept mudrick and Mourinho is not going to accept jackson misses in these sitters every week Mourinho is not going to accept madawake failing to beat his man Mourinho is not going to accept well we don't want him to accept Gallagher anyway but Mourinho's not going to accept Caicedo and Unzo dropping stinkers. He's not going to accept yeah. this bullshit. No, nor will Conte. And people can say those managers aren't good enough anyway. It's well, fine. But like, those are win now managers. They won't accept this. <laughs> so, like, for me, I I want Sari. He's my first choice. Get oh, Sari. I, I get agree. Simeone. Uh, I would take Inzaghi. I don't know about Simeone. I would take Spalletti. <laughs> These managers mm -hmm. are more proven than, say, Amarin, Alonso, Contessao, uh, like because they've won at the highest level. They know how to build teams. They know how to develop players and get to the end goal of winning. As much as I like uh, Amarin and I like Alonso, these guys haven't proved that they've won at the highest level yet. They're, they will be, they'll be kind of like Artetas, where they're good coaches and good builders, maybe, 
but they're nearly men. And do you want a nearly man or do you want a finished product? Because as great as Arteta is doing at Arsenal, those players don't have the mentality of winning because it stems from the manager. I want a manager that can not only coach up like these young players, but when these players get into positions to win, they're able to get over the line because it's a mentality. It, it's a mentality that needs to be ingrained back into our football club. Our football club used to have a DNA of no matter what we're going through, at the end of the day, if we're in a cup final, we win no matter what. That DNA has been missing for a number of years now. We need to bring that back. We need to bring back a winning mentality back into this football club. We need it back. And that's why the next appointment is so, it matters so much to me. Get Sari, get a lot, um, get Simeone. One of the, those two are my top targets. If not, get Inzaghi, get Spalletti, because Italy won't do anything in the Euros, and I doubt he will stay. So try and uh, buy him out of his contract. Get one of those four. Sorry, Scott, especially you if you're going for Osha, man. You no, Spalletti, that's a good link. Yeah. yeah. Also, the thing you've the problem you've got, and this is why you can't do the thing that you mentioned, Marshall, is like. These win now managers are obviously going to want to win now, and you can't do that with that squad. If you're going to build to this, pro like if you're going to build this project, quote unquote, you need to do that with the manager there at the same time. Like we can't mm -hmm. spend the next couple of years figuring out if Mudrik's good enough, and then at the point at which we figure out he's not good enough or is good enough at 25 at that point he'll be, like then hand him to a an Alonso. Like no, that's stupid. That's dumb. You need to do it at the same time. You so, don't buy I mean, the reason do it and the... and figure out like also you don't do that at Chelsea. Like I know we talk about oh like at the cl the big club and everything. You don't do that at Chelsea. You can do that at Brighton. You can do that at Brentford, at Bournemouth, whatever. You don't do that at United. You don't do that at Chelsea. You don't do that at Arsenal. You don't do that at these clubs. You can't do that at these clubs because the pressure but... should be on you straight away. But I guess the reason I said that is because don't you think another manager could come in here and get better results with this team than Poch? And oh, no, of course. If the case, but that's 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 kind of what I'm I'm calling for. Another manager that can get better results than Poch. And listen, we're gonna we're gonna ruffle a lot of feathers with this ownership. Like that's that's a given. You bring in a manager that is going to get results with what he has. He's going to get ruffled because he's not going to get the targets he wants. But he he's at least going to get us results. We go through another manager, do the same fucking thing, get some results. Don't back them like we're supposed to, which is going to, you know, it's going to ruffle feathers. I understand that. But by that time, at least we have had gotten results. The players will have developed a little no, bit man. better. Like, you know, that's uh, kind of where I'm going. How they, that's how they that's if you bring in content for... And, I don't, again, I don't know what type of manager you're thinking about when you're saying win now managers. Because I'm, all I'm thinking about is content. It's not necessarily win now managers, but there are other managers I know that can get better results than what Podge is doing. Oh, any, yeah, a lot of these managers can get better results. But, like, ultimately, it's not just about, like, if we're talking about getting better results, we can just get an interim from now until the end of the season. But we need something. Be, we got these young players. We need something beyond that now. Yeah. We need progression for the next two, three, four years. We need a plan. And the plan should be getting someone that can develop these young players from not just a technical standpoint, from a, but from a mentality standpoint. We need a reset culturally within this club. Yeah. And what you said as well, Marshall, about like if you're to bring someone in and they don't get who they want, like that doesn't work unless you've got an agreeable manager. Like a Conte doesn't work, that doesn't work. A Mourinho, that doesn't work. Like that doesn't work. Like that. Th that idea doesn't work and it doesn't have to be a mutually exclusive thing you can bring in let's say a a, a Conce Sao or an Amarim you can bring them in and they can be both a project manager and also get results because if they have a system and coach a system properly and just have a better mentality than Potter had like they will get results naturally because that's what happens look at Emery like he came in didn't have all the players he wanted when he first came in. Got some players in. Even now, right? Look at a lot of the players they have. A lot of the players they have and play are the same players he got when he when he got there, right? The only like in like new players that they have really are Moreno, Bobby, who doesn't really start that much at the moment anymore because Bailey's been in good form. Tielemans, who doesn't really start. 
Am I forgetting anyone? Pa oh, Pau Torres. Four players. Like, he's still playing with most of the same players from last season that he came into. And that's the thing is, like, if you go and get someone who, yeah, like, Adams put it right, like, sorry. Like, sorry came in. We bought him two players he wanted the entire season, by the way. He asked for two players and got both of them. And that was all we gave him because that was all we uh, he asked for. I think we might have given him a couple of other players here and there, but it wasn't what he asked for. He asked for two players and we gave him both of them. And he was a project manager. He was a thing of like, it's going to take a year to learn his system. And he's normally better in the second year. And that's the thing is that it doesn't have to be a mutually exclusive thing where you either get someone who's going to build something or you get someone who's going to get results. You can do both, but that's on this ownership group. And more importantly, the um, sporting directors to identify the right person because they failed twice. Well, technically the directors have failed once and the ownership group has failed twice, but. I get you. I got you. All right, boys. <clears throat> I think it's time to wrap it up. I don't think there's much else to really touch on. Uh, it's it's another shitty loss on a final. I wish I could be here after a victory, but it's going to suck because tomorrow I got to go on American Waffle and explain myself, and I'm going to get roasted. Yeah, I'm going to have to hold that one. So that'll be fun. But ladies and gents, be sure to, as we wrap up, smash the like button on the way out i appreciate it we're gonna raid the sarcasm city live stream right now i believe they're still live streaming um but go ahead and copy and paste that raid message let them know where you're coming from let them know know where the love's coming from be sure to smash up the like button as it helps up with the youtube algorithm be sure to subscribe if you haven't done so already we have a lot of new subscribers today stay uh stick around and check out all the content we have plenty of streams for you guys to look at from before today um discussing multiple topics we have the wednesday stream which is going to be after the game right there's a game on wednesday i believe it's wednesday yeah so we have the game wednesday oh yeah it'll be lovely let's see what happens um we'll be discussing that game after well I'll be discussing. I don't know what's going to happen with the rest of you guys. Some of you may have checked out, to be honest. <laughs> but what? I'll be Why here. We're win? here to suffer together, Marshall. All together. I, I, as one. We must suffer. <laughs> I'll be here to suffer uh, uh, on Wednesday, depending on the result, obviously. We are rating uh, Sarcasm City and Flawless over there, probably talking about the game. But yeah, guys. Also, oh, as always. Of suffering. Sorry, speaking of suffering. Uh, you guys thought that I would lose an Afghan final and Chelsea wouldn't lose their final either. Ah, we suffer so together. You're, 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 yeah, we you're suffer together. yeah, we suffer together. <laughs> yeah, we all do. Sorry. Speaking of, I'm not, I'm not even, I'm not even happy that we lost. To me, but I'm actually, but I'm like, hey, if, we're, if, we're, if I'm sad, we can all be sad. It's fine. <laughs> you can have we can all be sad together. One, man. Yeah. Let's get, let's get the. We must suffer. Uh, emojis uh, in the right. chat please yeah, all right yeah, let's yeah, get man. those we must suffer emojis in the chat get the suffers up all right and more yeah, suffering in the chat more suffering in the chat <laughs> but um so at the end of the show check out our memberships we have four different tiers people who are the proper casual and higher tiered get shout out to the end of every show and that's going to go out to felipe courtois b man god of frogs gabriel a orizant hereditar hassan nawaz a solomon uncle gestures fc will adrian scott dark og turbo jesus and ee -E. thank you guys so much for your support and thank you so much for all our other members who are also supporting and keeping the lights on here on casually fc thank you to all the new subscribers as well big up to lewis for the raid ladies and gents we'll see you on wednesday and we'll catch you over on flawless stream in a little bit peace out stay casual and try to sleep tonight don't let chelsea ruin the rest of the weekend even though they probably did but later peace